Sue Ann is the happy homemaker. Always done a super job. But can Sue Ann win a bake-off with a new cook in town? Stay tuned as the happy homemaker continues on Nick at Night. Who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell, why don't you take it You're gonna make it after I'll have to remember that. The French have a word for beauty, Lancôme Paris. And you're invited to celebrate Paris à la Lancôme with the Lancôme Parisienne shoulder sack. Celebrate the brilliance of rouge absolu lip color, luxurious trésor bath gel, emancile for lusher lashes, from the world's beauty authority. The Lancôme Parisienne, your free gift to celebrate with a French baguette to go. Now with any 1750 Lancome purchase at Hex. Wiss wants your worst. With three teenage sons, we're talking the real worst. But we're talking new double power Wiss. One of them blew up a burrito. And doesn't toss the salad a stupid expression. Every wash load is a collection of stains, and nothing gets out stains better than new double power whisk. Oh, good, a late entry. It's so thick with power, half as much cleans the worst wash load. Even the grease is gone. Trust me, they're you. Only cleaner. New Double Power Whisk. When you get out the worst, the rest is easy. If you need a taste of good TV, don't cook tonight. Watch Nick at night. Mm, good TV. Every night for the TV generation. It's going down. It's live. It's happening. It's Sounds of the 70s, the biggest, hottest collection of 70s hits ever. Songs of 1979, more than one full hour of hits for only $9.99 on Compact Disc or Cassette. Audition other great sounds of the 70s albums. There's no minimum to buy. Cancel anytime. Fun to stay at the YMCA. Fun to stay For a good time, call this number now. To order sounds of the 70s, use your credit card and call 1-800-632-5200. That's 1-800-632-5200. Or send $9.99 for one double-length cassette or one compact disc, plus $3.50 shipping and handling to Sounds of the 70s, 79, Department 1, Richmond, Virginia. Phones open 24 hours. Sue Ann is back. Did I miss anything? <laughs> No, actually, you did. You see, uh, Mary tried to attack me, but I fought her off. <laughs> the Happy Homemaker continues next on Nick at Night. Oh, 
boy, Lou was right. Shopping for wedding presents on a Saturday afternoon is slow torture. I think torture's supposed to be slow, Murray. What would be the point of fast torture? <laughs> if it were anyone but Rhoda getting married, I wouldn't have done it. Well, she'll appreciate it, Murr. Gee, I just hope she likes what we got. It'll be a little difficult for her to fly back to Minneapolis to exchange them. <laughs> oh, she'll love everything, Mary. Who wouldn't want silver on their dining room table? The Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the wrapping exquisite? It sure These is. These bows take forever to tie. Now, let's see. This is the silver nut dish that I got from Mr. Grant to send her. Oh, no, excuse me. I think that is the nut dish. Yeah, this is my wine coaster. No, this is the wine coaster. Uh. Well, this... <laughs> Actually, I think the wrapping was a little overdone. <laughs> Hello, Mary Richards? Yes. I'm Gloria Munson. Carla Munson's little baby sister. Carla Munson's little sister. Well, well. I was, like, I was like a hundred years behind you at Roseburg High. Roseburg High, right. Carla Munson. She told me to look you up when I got to Minneapolis. Oh, well, and I'm glad you did. Come on in. Thank you. Uh, I'd like you to meet Georgette Franklin and Murray Slaughter. This is Gloria Munson. She was a uh, hundred years behind me in school. Oh, hi, Gloria. Sit down. Thank you. I, I didn't mean to interrupt anything. I, did you just have a birthday or something? Oh, no. They're wedding presents for a friend who's getting married. Ah, uh, half my class is already married. <laughs> I'm like the old maid, you know? Right. <laughs> How is she? Oh, exactly the same. Good, good, good. Listen, I gotta get home. Thanks for the help, man. Yeah, thank hey, you. Hey, yeah, when is Rhoda getting married? Two weeks. Oh, perfect. Georgette might just have those presents rewrapped by then. <laughs> nice seeing you, Gloria. Nice meeting you, too, Mr. Slaughter. You know who else told me about you? Mrs. North Shield. My old English teacher. Right. Oh, my. Your biggest fan at Roseburg High. Mary Richards this and oh, Mary well. Richards that. <laughs> she never stopped talking about oh, you. How is she? Dead. <laughs> Mary, is that good enough? Oh, gee, Georgette, that's perfect. I mean, I'd never even know it had been unwrapped. Listen, you better mark it right away so we remember which one it is. <laughs> Would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thanks. I can't stay. Mary, I didn't mean to bother you at home. I, well, I just wanted to ask you about your work. Uh huh. You want to get into television, right? <laughs> That's why I looked you up. Carla said you were the one everybody turned to when they needed help. <laughs> and I really need help. Well, Gloria, I'd love to help, but there just aren't any jobs open at WJM right now. I know, there are no jobs open anywhere. Well, I tell you what, why don't you at least come in Monday and I'll show you around anyway. Oh, would you do that? Sure. Oh, wow. Oh, just, just to see the inside of a TV station would be such a kick. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall I call you or, or what? No, I tell you, why don't you just come in about 11? How's that? Oh, fine. Oh, gee, thanks, Mary. Oh, goodbye, Miss Franklin. Bye. Gee, you're super. Oh, come on. Just like Carla said. All right, but listen, I'm not promising anything, huh? Okay. Still, I can't turn down Carla Munson's sister. Bye. <laughs> Who is Carla Munson? Uh, say, I forgot to ask you, Mary. What did I get Rhoda? Oh, a beautiful silver nut dish. A nut dish? Yeah. <laughs> you mean like on a bar with peanuts, uh, that kind of nut dish? And a guy on the next stool says, how about shoving that down this way, Max, if somebody else can have a few, that kind of nut dish? Uh, not exactly. No, this is a beautiful silver dish with a tiny, delicate engraving of a leaf on one side. Very mm -hmm. delicate. Yeah. Well, one of my bars is nicer. It has a picture of Mr. Peanut. <laughs> Tete-a-tete entre nous. Well, how come your talk always sounds like food? <laughs> Fudge. I need some advice. <laughs> the station manager thinks my show needs improvement. Mm. <laughs> I knew you'd all laugh when I told you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Lou, how do I get him off my back? Uh, station manager, huh? Well, I know Ed Schroeder pretty well. He's always had a weakness for the ladies. If I were you, Sue Ann, well, you don't want to hear my suggestion. <laughs> dear Lou, dear cryptic, bashful, dirty-minded Lou, I suppose I owe him the courtesy of listening to his vile suggestion. <laughs> What do you think of the cleft in my chin? I noticed it was washing out under the studio light, so I darkened it with a ballpoint pen. Looks like your face has a little blue belly button. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mr. Small. Hi, Gloria. Gloria. Am Hi. I too early? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Gloria, this is Ted Baxter. Ted Baxter. I watch you every night. How come there's ink on your chin? He had squid for breakfast. Who, uh, who is this charming child? This is Gloria Munson. She'd like to get into television. Well, you've come to the right place, Gloria. Well, Ted, actually, I already told her that we have no job openings. All I want is a chance. Well, I might be able to pull a few strings. I'll do the lowest kind of unskilled work. Watch it, Ted. Competition. <laughs> You should be ashamed of yourself. And thanks. <laughs> Sue Ann Nivens. You know Sue Ann? She is my idol. My absolute favorite television personality. I don't believe I've met this adorable and perceptive youngster. <laughs> Sue Ann, this is Gloria Munson. She's looking for a job, is but I... Is there I'm... any chance that... Well, that I could watch you tape a show, Miss Nivens, in person. I never miss it. I even watch your reruns. I've seen your peche flambe six times. And I know your dumplings by heart. Who doesn't? <laughs> oh, Murray. Murray, with your sly wit, it's a wonder you never became more successful. <laughs> Oh, well, may I watch you, please? Certainly. Is it all right, Mary? Yeah, sure. Oh, perhaps I can help. I think television needs bright young women. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> and even, and to a certain extent, Mary. <laughs> this is like meeting royalty. It's all a wonderful dream. A whole chapter for my diary. Oh, Miss Gibbons. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to be that age again? I don't think I ever was. <laughs> okay, Gloria, that's it for now. Okay, thanks, Mr. Wilson. Camera's back at 2 o'clock. Gloria, hi. Hi. Sue Ann told me she gave you a job as her stand-in. That's terrific. Oh. Thought I'd just come down and see how you're doing. Oh, it is all so exciting. I mean, I'm not just Sue Ann's stand-in. She lets me help her out in every way I can. Yeah. This morning, I peeled onions, cleaned a fish, scoured the oven, and unclogged a drain. Oh, oh Mary, isn't show business just wonderful? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mary. Hello, oh, Mary. Hi. Ed, I'd like you to know my new stand-in, Gloria Munson. Gloria, this is Mr. Schroeder, WJM station manager. Hello, Gloria. Oh, it's such an honor to meet you, Mr. Schroeder. Wow, you look so young to have such an important job. Well, I'm not all that young. <laughs> Ed's been making some more suggestions. Oh, what kind of suggestions? I thought Sue Ann's show was very successful. Oh, yeah, it is, Mary, but you can't rest on yesterday's laurels. The public demands change. You must have found that on your show. Oh, yeah, yeah, we try to change the news almost every night. <laughs> Listen, I gotta get going. I just wanted to say I think it's terrific the way things are working out. Sue Ann, I feel that your show needs some changes, some new elements. Frankly, Jane Q. Public is getting a wee bit tired of the same old household hints every day. The same old hi The same old hints? Here's what I'm doing today. Tell me if these sound like the same old hints. Lemon juice your knickknacks? <laughs> new life for your squeegee? <laughs> Moisten your suction cups? <laughs> Kiss soap dish jelly goodbye? <laughs> Same old hands. Mr. Schroeder, I know it's not my place to say anything, but 
But I think Sue Ann's show is just wonderful, and I think you should be proud to present it on your station. What a sweet, generous, accurate thing to say. <laughs> of course, I, I'm sure there's not a TV show in the world that couldn't stand a few changes. What sort of changes? Well, since you asked, Sue Ann, I was thinking this morning, wouldn't it be terrific if... Oh, you don't want to hear this. Uh, that's right, dear. <laughs> no, no, please, go ahead. I'd like to hear it. Well, with everyone so concerned with physical fitness these days, why don't we demonstrate some calisthenics for housewives? That's very interesting. As a matter of fact, it might appeal to the male audience. After all, men love to watch an attractive girl do gymnastics. Marvelous idea, Gloria. I'll just lower the neckline on my leotards and... <laughs> what sort of exercises did you see me doing? Oh, something simple like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have got a terrific idea. Sue Ann, you can describe the exercises, and Gloria can demonstrate them. On the air? Of course. Me? Oh, no. Oh, oh, yes. Now, why don't you both work up something for tomorrow's show, okay? But... Trust me. It's going to be terrific. Bye, Gloria. Goodbye. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm actually going to be on television tomorrow. Oh, what do you think I should do for my first exercise? What about a headstand? <laughs> you mean you, you just want me to stand on my head? No. I want to stand on your head. <laughs> Sue Ann. Mary. Listen, I can't stay long. Something's come up at the newsroom. Uh, what did you want to talk to me about? Mary, did you know the best time to cut a flower is when the bud turns soft? Uh, no, no, I didn't. What uh, did you want to talk to me about? Well, just that Ed Schroeder now feels that that exercise spot works better with Gloria doing the whole thing. Oh, so you mean as well as demonstrating them, she'll be describing them too? Yes. Did you know a lump of sugar will make your rosebuds open faster? No, I didn't. <laughs> so, Anne, why do you keep changing the subject? Because I'm arranging flowers, dear. If I concentrate on these aromatic blooms, I can create a floral fantasy. Whereas if I think about Gloria, I'm apt to rip their smelly little heads off. <laughs> Look, I think I understand how you feel. Mary, let me fill you in. Three days ago, he met her for the first time. The next day, he took her to lunch. Last night, he took her to dinner. Today, he's been calling her repeatedly on the telephone. Aha, uh -huh. so she's sort of become his, uh, protege? Oh, Mary, how well you put things. <laughs> this protege. I do like that word. <laughs> protege. From the French. Meaning your place or mine. <laughs> Little Miss Muffet is after my job. Oh, come on, Sue Ann. Why does that have to follow? All right, so she's dating the program manager. So they become good friends. Very good friends. Assuming they do. All right, all right, let's say they do. Let's assume that she is doing what you think she's doing. Why does that necessarily mean she's going to get your job? How do you think I got it? <laughs> Inside, Ted Baxter is saying, if only Lou would hold me, everything would be all right. Why We Watch with Naked Nights, Dr. Will Miller. Ted is like a spoiled little boy. Mary should be confronting him, saying, Ted, we love you, but we can't tolerate this behavior. Now go to your office and don't come out until we tell you. Love and limits. Lou does it right. He may not be holding Ted, but he is taking care of him with tough love. So Ted is growing and maturing, thanks to his family at WJM. Recently, an object was sighted. It was just big. Too big to measure with the human eye. They say it could show up anywhere. Pizza Hut! Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. Out of sight, big! 21 slices. I can handle it. On a totally different crust. Whoa! For a ridiculously low $10.99. <laughs> Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. The biggest pizza you can get delivered. Also from Pizza Hut delivery, salad for four. Nick at night. Fresh. Nick at night. All night, every night. Now in color or black and white. <sighs> 
I drove it for eight years. Your Toyota dealer invites you to see the 1993 Corolla. I never got so much out of a car. And discover a special lease program that makes getting a new Corolla easier than ever. But I've gone on to bigger and better things. Just got the new one. For as little as $179 a month with no down payment, you get Corolla's room, comfort, and safety features. A great car becomes a great deal. Discover the new Corolla lease program at your Toyota dealer and rediscover value. If you feel that watching Alfred Hitchcock will keep you up at night, try a little warm milk and watch Hitchcock every night on Nick at Night. All the cool fruity taste of watermelon is in Jell-O Watermelon Gelatin. Jell-O makes watermelon wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. It's wiggle, delicious. Wiggle, wiggle. Now you can have your fun and eat it too. Sue Ann is the happy homemaker. Always done a super job. The happy homemaker continues on Nick at Night. has a name it's just a casserole it's wonderful i love chicken and zucchini georgette this doesn't have either chicken or zucchini <laughs> i know but i love them and i also love this so this reminded me of them <laughs> gotcha when are you going to rhoda's wedding what reminded you of that that was a new thought <laughs> I leave Friday after work. Either Mr. Grant or Murray will drive me to the airport. If I were you, I'd have them both do it. Just for the company. I'm afraid of flying. I once had a very bad experience in an airplane. What happened? It took off. <laughs> That's why I don't think I'll be able to go to Rona's wedding. Oh, Georgette, flying is perfectly safe. Don't you realize more accidents happen in the bathroom than in planes? Really? Gee, Mary, if that's true, how come they don't sell bathroom insurance? <laughs> Sue Ann. Hello, Mary. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, not at all. Come in. What brings you here? I'm bugged and I need to talk to somebody, okay? Yeah, sure. Hello, Georgia. Hi, Sue Ann. That looks good. What is it? Not zucchini. <laughs> Would you like some? Oh, no thanks, dear. As a rule, I enjoy amateur food. But you know, I'm just too upset. Schroeder's finally done it. What now? Tomorrow, in addition to a regular exercise spot, Gloria will also be giving a little baking demonstration. Why is Mr. Schroeder giving her her own baking spot on your show? I don't know, dear. Perhaps he has a weakness for tarts. <laughs> Sue Ann, have you spoken to Mr. Schroeder? That lot of good that would do. I'm out, Mary. Finished. Washed up. Aw, no, Sue Ann, I don't believe that. She's a, a an inexperienced 23-year-old kid. Come on. Look, personal feelings aside, Ed Schroeder is the station manager. And he's not about to make a star out of someone who's totally incompetent. Of course not. He's the one who hired Ted. <laughs> the secret of Zavagioni tarts is to make the crust flaky as snow. I'm sorry, I've got to turn the sound down. I just can't listen to her. I think she's flaky as snow. <laughs> <laughs> what is Sue doing during all this? She's helping. See, those are her hands, passing the ingredients to Sue. See the ones with the very white knuckles? <laughs> you know something you're right, it's better with the sound off. Sure, besides, I, I can give you a play-by-play. -play. <clears throat> with her left hand, she's stirring some funny white glop with a wire thing that has loops. Now, with her right hand, she's pouring the glop. There are a lot of little funny things that look like falsies. <laughs> Correction, I'm informed the technical term for falsies is pastry shop. I just can't believe it. Gloria seemed so sweet. Well, not to me. I spotted Gloria the minute she walked in here. Something about her looked phony to me. Maybe she was wearing pastry shells. <laughs> You 
all I can figure out is what that dummy Schroeder sees in her. I mean, I know he's the boss around here, but I saw the show with my own eyes and my own objective opinion. Glory was awful. Good. Awfully good. <laughs> Wasn't she, guys? Wasn't she something, that Glory? Listen, there's going to be a celebration down on the set, and I want you all to be there. Right behind you, Chief. <laughs> Mm. Gloria made them all herself. Have one. They look wonderful. <laughs> They're Napoleons. And after all, you are our emperor. <laughs> Long live the emperor. <laughs> I'm so glad you could all come to our little party. People, you must try some of Gloria's creations. Have some croquembouche. Oh, just my luck. I had croquembouche for breakfast. <laughs> Mary, isn't Gloria's pastry delicious? You know something, Sue Ann? You're being... More than sportsmanlike. Yeah, you got a lot of class, Sue Ann. A champ. Really, you're being terrific. Just terrific. I'm impressed. Me too. What are you up to? <laughs> Mary, can't you just accept the fact that I'm bowing out gracefully? No. <laughs> Folks of WJM, I guess it's no secret that a star was born today. It's no secret a star was born today. <laughs> Which, of course, is not to take anything away from our own Sue Ann Nivens, who has always done a super job. Always done a super job. <laughs> Personally, I do not believe that a show can operate efficiently with two stars. Efficiently with two stars. So here's my solution. Maybe our station is better off without stars. After all, if we've got good people working together as equals, who needs stars? Let's just do away with stars. Schroeder, you're making a fool of yourself over a broad. <laughs> That, what do you call it? Too fast. I think I gave myself a real belly ache. Oh, Murr, that's too bad. I'll get you some bicarbonate. Oh, thanks. Did you eat that Mogan Bush thing? We all ate different things, Lou. Why? I don't feel so good. <laughs> Me either. Is it sort of like you swallowed a hot mitten? More like a percolator. Now your knees shaky? And I'm sweating behind the ears. What is it? Maybe we're in love. Here you go, Mer. Go <coughs> down. Thanks, man. On second thought. Save some for me. You too. Mm hmm. Good news, people. I think we got food poisoning. From what? Cream fillings. Apparently, they were left unrefrigerated. Everybody's got it? Everybody. You should see Ed Schroeder. all the poor lamb can do to lift his head and scream at Gloria. When the red, red robin comes <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on, guys, it's magic time. Mustn't keep my public waiting. We can't afford to lally-gag. <laughs> Don't say gag, Ted. You know something, Sue Ann? Suddenly, I'm getting this awful suspicion. Don't blame Gloria, Mary. The child's a neophyte. She's green. She's not the only one. <laughs> Understandable accident. Hot lights will make cream go bad like that. You mean Gloria made the mistake of not refrigerating the cream? No. Gloria made the mistake of asking me to do it. <laughs> Sue Ann, you knew and you stood there and you let us eat that cream. Mary, I ate it too. <laughs> for the good of the show. <laughs> After all, as I said to Gloria just now, <laughs> bending down to where she was lying under the sink. <laughs> Can't stand the heat, dear. Get out of my kitchen. 
No food poisoning or no food poisoning. I've never yet missed our show. Oh, I'm sorry, Lou, but it only lasts a few hours. <laughs> Good evening, this is Ted Baxter with headlines and deadlines from around the world, Washington. In a statement on the economy released early today, President Ford said... Uh-oh. I don't know what it's all about. I don't know what I'm up against. I'm sleeping and right in the middle of a good dream. Doesn't somebody want to be wanted? Like me, like me. We had a dream. We'd go traveling together. Classic lyrics. Classic TV. The Partridge Family. Every weeknight on Nick at Night. America's favorite stiff is back. At Barney Lomax, I recognize that smirk anywhere. But this corpse has a job to do. I found a key to a safety deposit box in St. Thomas. So they're packing him up. Get in there. And heading for the islands. Who is that? Oh, he's our boss. He's dead. Don't worry about it. Oh. Weekend at Bernie's too. No one does death like Bernie. Rated PG. Starts Friday at a theater near you. This summer, MCI's Friends and Family Reunion Sweepstakes takes off on Northwest Airlines and Norwegian Cruise Line. Call 1-800-222-1125 and you can win a seven-day cruise to the Caribbean or the Mexican Riviera for you and 19 of your friends and family. Plus, win dinner and Orioles box seats for eight of your friends and family from WBAL-TV 11. So call MCI now and find out how to receive free long-distance calling and a chance to win the reunion of a lifetime. Bon voyage! Sizzler salad bars gone international. Sounds good. Give my taste buds. From Chinese chicken salad to shrimp Louis pasta. Sounds good. One of the best salad bars in town just went world class with all new favorites. And to top them off, German Black Forest cake sundaes at the dessert bar. Take our world tour for just five sixty nine at lunch, seven twenty nine dinner. You know, the Dick Van Dyke Show is about a man struggling to keep his integrity in the crass world of show no, business. No, no, it's huh? not. It's about a woman confronting her own insecurity. What insecurity? About her future, her individuality, her marriage. But it's the man who has to battle the New York rat well, race. Well, being a housewife in New Rochelle is no picnic either. Well, that's not the point. This is a show about a man about who a has woman. to argue about the Dick Van Dyke Show. Why do you think they call it the Dick Van Dyke Show? Well, if you don't know, I'm certainly not going to tell you. Every night on Nick at Night. Boy, I love Fridays. I'm even looking forward to the drive to the airport, especially after the way I felt last night. Oh, I know. I mean, suppose that had happened today. I wouldn't have been able to go to New York. I would have missed Rhoda's wedding. Mm. Don't worry. If you didn't show up, Rhoda would postpone the wedding. You ready? <laughs> yeah, but listen, Mr. Grant, you don't both have to drive me to the airport. I want to go. They got a great bar at the airport. I want to check out their nut dish. <laughs> well, Mayor, up to the airport, eh? Yep. Well, have fun in Fun City. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> I just can't get over having that thing hit me last night right on camera. But if I do say so myself, I think I cover pretty well. I doubt if anyone even knew I was sick. <laughs> Except for that one time you looked into the camera and yelled, if there is a doctor within the sound of my voice, please help. <laughs> Hi, Mary, I see you're off. Yep. Now you have fun at that wedding. Oh, thanks. And don't forget to kiss all the ushers for me. <laughs> so, Anne, you don't kiss the ushers in a wedding. Mary, dear, don't tell me how to have fun at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know many people from Minneapolis cannot recall the most basic news events of the 70s? They don't remember the oil shortage, or the bicentennial, or the name Gerald Ford. And yet they all claim they watched the nightly news. Heavenly Father, this is Ted Bax. I've just been handed a bulletin. You have something on your front tooth. Population exclusion. Researchers have not identified a reason. Who is the woman who didn't know one dog from another was a vegetarian. Veterinarian! Introducing, for a limited time, 
the Taco Bell Wild Burritos. As tasty as the originals, but one little difference. They're hot, man. They may not be the perfect family, but they are the most fun. Whoopi Goldberg, Ted Danson, Made in America, Will Smith. Yeah, funny. Real laughs. A grand old comedy. <laughs> Dad! Yes! Ow! A family like this could only be made in America. Directed by Richard Benjamin. Great PG-13. Now playing. She finished school and moved back home. Will you be close now that she's all grown? Fold you're starting to brew. Was she up ahead of you? The remarkable aroma of mountain-grown Folgers. It really does open your eyes. Now you see her in a different way. Yes, I do take after you. That's part of waking up. It's soldiers in your club. Nick at Night presents classic TV poetry, Dark Alley Blues. All at once, you lost your first name. We could be lying in a dark alley calling my name. What a shame. It's only a game. A nice home, a wife, and a simple life. A man who has never had Chinese food in his whole life. My mama was right there losing the night. I believe it, but I'm not very bright. You're Baxter. I watch you every night. On Nick at Night. On Nick at Night. <laughs> away now you'll miss the happy homemaker nobody misses a vain selfish egotistical middle-aged shrew of course we do stay tuned the happy homemaker continues next on nick at night who can turn the world on with her smile You can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell, why don't you take it You're gonna make it after history as creator, producer, and writer of the Dick Van Dyke Show. But that wasn't enough. I'm a genius. I can do anything. Get to know Carl Reiner, actor, as Nick at Night presents Carl on camera. You know, I'm thinking of maybe not even wearing my hair in this part. It's five hand-picked episodes of the Dick Van Dyke Show. There are a couple of hee-hees, a couple of ha-has, some ho-hos. Carl on camera. All this week at 9, 8 central on Nick at Night. America's Paint Store, from color matching to custom paints. America's Paint Store, more choices than any other store. America's Paint Store, Home Depot, nobody beats our prices, guaranteed. On Bear Plus 10 Solid Color Stains, Bear offers superior durability and protection against water and sun damage, and stops warping and checking. Bear Plus 10, America's Paint Store, with paint experts you can trust. Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Why work out? Strength, power, confidence, endurance, energy, looking good, feeling good. Why work out at Bally's? Treadmills, life cycle aerobic trainers, stair climbers, free weights, step Reebok program, trainers, 30 minute workout, aerobics, swimming, locations, locations. Why work out at Bally's now? It's just $12 a month, so stop asking questions. Call 1-800-WORKOUT. That's 1-800-WORKOUT. Now. 
From Hollywood Pictures, don't miss America's number one thriller, Guilty as Sin. The movie Roger Ebert calls truly engrossing. Rebecca De Mornay is at her best, says the LA Times. And CBS TV raves Don Johnson gives an outstanding performance. Guilty as Sin, rated R, now playing. And from Touchstone Pictures comes the one summer movie that'll make you feel like you can take on the world. Critics call it a rock till you drop knockout. What's love got to do with it? Rated R. Sneak preview this Saturday. Sue Ann is back. Did I miss anything? <laughs> no, 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 nothing. No, actually, you did. You see, uh, Mary tried to attack me, but I fought her off. <laughs> the Happy Homemaker continues next on Nick at Night. Hey, guys. Hello. Sir. What do you got there, Murray? Well, what does it look like? I'm changing my ribbon. The other one's worn out. A good workman never blames his tools. <laughs> A good workman doesn't have to write for one. Hey, you two, you're starting kind of early today, aren't you? You're right, Mayor. You're right. Ted, I apologize. Look what he did. What's gotten into you today? No, he's just jealous because I'm going to Chicago and he isn't. Huh? What makes you so sure Lou's going to pick you? Well, he's certainly going to pick someone who can't even change a typewriter ribbon. Pick someone for what? What's all this about Chicago? Well, Lou got a call last night. They want us to send one delegate to the broadcasters' convention. Three whole days. Everything paid for. Where do you want to go? You're married. What's that got to do with it? Come on, Mary. Guys at a convention in a hotel in a strange town. <laughs> that suggests a certain atmosphere. Yeah, it sure does. A bunch of middle-aged drunks in funny hats asking some cab driver where the action is. <laughs> cab driver, huh? <laughs> well, I take it you're not interested in being our delegate. Me? No, no way. Oh, wait, Murray, you don't suppose with my bad luck you that I'm You'd be wasted gonna... on you. You're not a guy. You don't even have credit cards. <laughs> anyway, what are we arguing? Lou's gonna make up his own mind. Nothing we say is gonna influence him. Lou, let me go to the convention. I'll get it, yeah, his mother was up all night sewing name tapes into his shorts. Why do you guys want to go so much? Well, it's a chance to see Chicago again. Take in a couple of restaurants, go to a basketball game, have some drinks with the guys. Just have a little fun. Maybe you're right. I'll go. <laughs> Go, Lou. What do you got against me? What did I ever do to you, huh? <laughs> there you are, Lou. I tracked you to your lair. My lair? Oh, sure. I always think of you as a big, gruff bear. You hide in here and growl at people, but you have a playful side, too. Yeah. <laughs> The bear is the clown of the animal world, Lou. His lumbering gait conceals a prancing spirit. I always think of you that way. Prancing. Crouching, skulking in your lair until just the right moment comes to rush outside and kill someone. <laughs> I don't always have to rush outside. <laughs> Sometimes they come right into my cave. Ah, uh, Lou, you don't scare me. I know. What can I do for you, Sue Ann? What flight are you taking to Chicago? Why? Well, I thought we should travel together for the company. I didn't know you were going. Who would miss a chance like this? Three days and nights in the city where I had my first program. It was a cooking show called... Let's talk about meat. <laughs> oh, Lou, I will show you the town. We'll go everywhere together. We'll, we'll see everything. We'll do everything. It'll give us something to remember and talk about for years afterward. So what's your flight number? I'm not going. Mary is. <laughs> you were going to Chicago instead of me? Well, to tell you the truth, Marie wasn't too crazy about the idea to begin with. Now, don't get me wrong, Mayor, but she's very understanding. And if I told her I was going, she would accept it in silence, which would last until February. 
Besides, Lou chose you. Lucky! Hi, <laughs> guys. Hi, Ted. Brought your suitcase to the newsroom, huh? Really? Rubbing it in, eh, Mary? No, Ted. Sure. The old Statue of Liberty play. Ted. Let Mary and me knock each other off while you pick up all the marbles. Oh, Ted, Well, I could on, say I... enjoy yourself, Mary. I could say have a good time, but that would be phony. I'm too much an upfront guy for that, so I'm going to live with you as a friend. I hope you have a rotten stay in Chicago. I hope it rains all the time and you can't go to the beach. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. There's no beach in Chicago. Well, I just remembered that. But there's a lake, Mary. Ha, ha, ha. I hope you can't make it to the lake. I hope it rains the whole time you're there. Ted, you realize, of course, this means no postcard. I don't know who wants a picture of the Empire State Building anyway. I know, I know. The Empire State Building isn't in Chicago. Well, tough. All set for the Windy City, Mary, that toddlin' town? Mm. Hey, Mr. Grant, are you sure you won't go? I'd like to go. I really would. It'd, it'd be fun. Oh, Mr. Grant, would it be fun? Lots of fun. A lot of drinking with the guys. A lot of good stuff. Uh, I'm glad you're looking forward to it. <laughs> I'd go, but I can't get away this week. I've got to get my car washed. <laughs> go to the barber shop. Buy some socks. <laughs> Believe me, Mary, there are lots of good reasons. Hello, Sue Ann. Don't hello me, Mary. I find that kind of hypocrisy a little hard to swallow. Hello is hypocritical. If you were that desperate for a trip to Chicago, you'd have my pity. Sue Ann, I... To deprive I a hard-working man like Lou Grant of a good time simply to advance your own career is deplorable. But, Sue Ann, he asked me to go. Competing with a man is both aggressive and unfeminine, Mary. Now, I don't know what you hope to achieve, but your ambition is certainly obvious. No, Sue Ann, Mr. Grant can't go. He's got to go to the barber and uh, get a, he's a haircut, new socks. I've never heard such transparent hogwash in all my life. Neither have I. <laughs> Okay, here's your closet, bathroom, light switch, coffee maker, TV, air conditioner. You won't be needing it. We're supposed to have three straight days of cold wind and rain. <laughs> Baxter's curse strikes again. <laughs> to enjoy together. Mm -hmm. How foolish we'd be to let a few cross words come between us. Or a double door. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Like being back in college. Okay, you made your point, Ted. You want to call it off? <laughs> I even brought utensils. I may do a dab of cooking. I may do a dab of drinking. <laughs> While you unpack, dear, I'll start the ball rolling. I'm just calling my old station. There's a wonderful gang of guys there. They'd never forgive me if I didn't give them a buzz. Uh, hello, is Steve Norman there, please? Good. Would you tell him that Sue Ann Nivens is calling? <laughs> you should always lock your suitcase, dear, and put the key in a safe place. In your shoes, say. In your hat. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Norman is tied up in a meeting. Then, is Arnold Sutton there? Good. Would you try him, please? And be sure and tell him it's me. When you're traveling, always pack shoes bottom up so as not to smudge other clothes. <laughs> Just remember, souls toward heaven. Oh, that's cute, Sue Ann. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> he's where? Oh, he's in a meeting, too. Thank goodness. He's a dreadful bore. We were lucky. We? Uh, 
Why do you say we? Is Marvin Kruger there? Sue Ann, please uh, don't include me in your plans, okay? Mary, don't be silly. This is Chicago. I know everybody. Yeah, but I don't want to see everybody, really. Sue Ann, I've got my own plans. You know, uh, tomorrow I've got a day full of meetings and uh, theater tickets. I want to do some sightseeing. And tonight I'd really like to just go to bed early. Suit yourself, dear. Oh, Marvin's in a meeting, too? <laughs> well, th thank you. Anything wrinkled should be hung in the bathroom and steamed. <laughs> Put tissue paper in your shoes and don't hang sweaters. It gives you pointy shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of meeting Marvin the janitor would go to? <laughs> Hello? Yes, just a minute. Thank you. Uh, Sue Ann, you wanna... Oh, surely, dear. Thank you. And don't forget, put slacks under the mattress during the night, so while we sleep, we press our pants. <laughs> Hello? Oh, uh, Mr. Grant, hi. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, you know, uh, I just want to make sure you were okay. Uh, tell her I did, too. Yeah, Murray, too. Me and Murray want to make sure you were okay. That's it. Make me look like a sore head. And Ted. You said it, I didn't. So, uh, you behaving yourself there in that hotel room? Uh, Mr. Grant, I'm a little too tired to do anything else, but I think when I hang up, I'm just gonna wash my hair, uh, read a book, and get into bed. I'm just planning a nice, quiet evening alone. <laughs> Good news, Mary. Look what I found. <laughs> And now, a TV Land weather bulletin. As usual, early patterns will be warm and mild with light patter and sunny skies. Later tonight, TV Land will turn cold and dark with Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Look for some partly dead patches with a 30% chance of murder and an almost unbearable increase in suspense. This sinister pattern will persist night after night after night. Viewers, lock your windows, stay indoors, and watch Alfred Hitchcock Presents every night on Nick at Night. If you can't get away for lunch, now you can feel like you did. Introducing Stouffer's Lunch Express. 14 microwavable choices in an easy opening box, all for around $2. Now there's Stouffer's homemade taste for lunch. Work, 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 work. Stouffer's Lunch Express. Nothing comes closer to home. It's Nick at night. Makes the world seem bright. So tune it in and keep on watching Nick at night. All night, every night. It's a revolution. It's natural looking hair color with incredible shine. New casting tone on tone colorant from L'Oreal. It doesn't just color, it brightens. Just twist the applicolor. Simple, gentle as can be, with no ammonia. Casting lets color look natural. Brilliant. It even blends away gray. Casting, you won't believe how it feels, how it lasts. You won't believe it till you try it. New casting tone on tone colorant from L'Oreal. Hair color with brilliance. I know it's early, but it's time to talk about Breakfast Economics. Breakfast, breakfast Economics? Economics? What's Breakfast Economics? It's a good breakfast. At a great price. Great, great food, food, great, great value. value. It's supply and demand. You demand, we supply. A breakfast burrito is 99 cents. 99 cents. Can you believe that? 79 cents for a sausage biscuit? That'll keep your budget balanced. It's just smart. If you want a car or a house, it's smart. That's it. Bottom line. Oh, I get it. 79 cents and 99 cents. It's exactly what you want. What you want is what you get. At McDonald's today. Sue Ann is the happy homemaker. Always done a super job. <laughs> the happy homemaker continues on Nick at Night. Mary, I want you to meet Hal and Freddie. We're not on a last name basis yet. They're here for a convention, too. Pleased to meet you, Mary. Not half as pleased as I am. If we're intruding, please tell us. Uh, not that we'll stop, but please tell us. Do you have any ice, Mary? Oh, good. She's got glasses. It's fun to make passes at girls who have glasses. <laughs> Sue Ann. I met them in the hall, Mary. They were looking for the ice machine. It's not in here. Well, we could send for some. Are you using that phone? Uh, yes. I, uh, Mr. Grant, uh, just, um... Sue Ann, could I speak to you for a minute, please? Who needs ice? Well, actually, over-chilling spoils the bouquet of really fine whiskey. 
This is not all that fine. You can call for ice from my <laughs> May I uh, sit down? Yes, please. <laughs> Mr. Grant. No, it's uh, still <laughs> right out with some friends. Um, <laughs> what do you mean, work fast? Mr. Grant, I don't I know. Have... He's missing the time of his life. Who's Lou? He is my boss. The <laughs> no. Minneapolis, oh, please. Let me let me talk to him for a second. <laughs> this is a... Hello, Lou. Could I have <laughs> it's Freddy. Could I have <laughs> I'm a friend of Mary's. Oh. Yeah, May listen, please? I'll tell you what you should do. You should double this little lady's salary. May I please? <laughs> That's telling them, huh, Mary? Certainly. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Grant, Mr. Grant, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> Sue Ann, may I speak to you for a minute alone? Oh, I get it. A little girl talk, huh? <laughs> well, I can take a hint. Uh, don't fight over me, girls. There's plenty for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, your behavior is verging on rudeness. Rudeness? This is my room. And we are your guests. But I don't want guests. I want to spend a quiet evening alone. I am only thinking of Hal and Freddy, dear. They're two lonely men in a big city. They don't know where to turn. Let them ask a cab driver. <laughs> Excuse us. Uh, we just had a wonderful idea. If you girls don't have any plans for dinner... Uh, why don't you pick us up in ten minutes? Sue Ann! <laughs> all right, all right, make it fifteen. That'll give us time to put our faces on, you understand. Sure, but don't worry about changing, Mary. You look terrific just the way you are. Oh, aren't you sweet? <laughs> Hurry up and change. I'm not going anywhere. Mary, stubbornness is a weed that spoils our garden. <laughs> Poisons the soil, chokes the other plants, screens out all the sunshine. Now get the lead out. <laughs> Sue Ann, I am sure that they are very nice men, but I was really planning on spending a nice, relaxing evening in a hot tub. Life is too short, Mary. We must gather our rosebuds while we may. You can take a hot bath and relax when you're dead. <laughs> Why won't you understand that I don't want to go out to dinner? Well, right, Mary. If, if that's how you feel, we'll forget about Hal and Freddy. Good. Thank you. Two of us will stay here all evening. And we'll try to analyze the serious problem you have in, in dealing with other people. You know, I've always thought it would be interesting to delve into Mary Richards' psyche and, and find out who you really are. It'll just take me a minute to change. <laughs> You're a good friend, Mary. It's going to be a fun evening. We're not dressed yet, but you can take us the way we are. <laughs> okay, you'll have to wait till I'm off duty. <laughs> Some wine. Oh, now, wine is a man's department. Why don't you order it? All right, all right. Do you, uh, you like red or white? I would suggest, however, a robust burgundy with enough body so it's not overwhelmed by the steak au poivre. I don't care. Well, neither do I. Why don't we just forget about the wine? So, uh, what uh, convention are you fellows with? Well, now, take a guess. What do we look like? Oh, I don't want to guess. I hate that. Oh, come on. No, I hate guessing. I always guess wrong. <laughs> Go on, you'll die. <laughs> no, I won't. You'd better. <laughs> We're morticians. <laughs> I should have guessed that. No, no, no. No, you see, that's the problem. We've got this gloomy image, and we're trying to change it. And we're succeeding. <laughs> How did you get interested in uh, what you do? I like being around people. <laughs> you don't get rich, but you drive a big car. <laughs> Who gets the planter's fudge? Planter's fudge. Planter's fudge. Plants. Yes. Oh, you, dear. Uh -huh. you see, Mary, our profession teaches us not to fear death. Really? Why should we fear it? We get a 70% discount. <laughs> now listen, enough about us, Mary. Let's, uh, let's talk about you. Would you care to dance? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> what, uh, what do you do for a living? Oh, uh, how about Sue Ann? 
All right. What does she do for a living? I, I have a little TV show. It's really interesting, too. She's the happy homemaker. She gives tips. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> for instance, did you know that fresh flowers will last a week if their stems are dipped in salt? <laughs> We don't need them a week. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to dance, Mary? Uh, look at that button. You're going to lose that. Well, it's like we always say, nothing lasts forever. <laughs> you know, since so few people carry a needle, if you'll just wrap cellophane around those remaining threads, you can save them. I don't carry cellophane. I do. <laughs> you do? Isn't that nice? I'll bet you move like a cat on a dance floor. Say, let's take her up to Norman's party later. Oh, good idea. Oh, no, I don't think so, really. We're both very tired. You know, after that long flight, it was uh, an hour on the plane. It'll be a real hoot, Mary. I'll bet you've never been to a mortician's party. Right. <laughs> well, why not give in? Sooner or later, we're gonna get you. <laughs> and rotate your bolt. <laughs> oh, come on, Sue Ann, don't be upset. Upset? Why should I be upset? <laughs> it was perfectly obvious. They preferred me, can you deny it? No, no, certainly can't. Don't patronize me, Mary, I hate that. <laughs> what are you doing? I always cook when I'm really bugged. <laughs> some people clean, some people wash their hair. With me, it's chocolate fondue. I was going to use this in a Pyrex seminar tomorrow, but my needs come first. <laughs> All right. Let's assume they preferred you. Hey, look, I'm really sorry. Although, why should we assume a thing like that? Because they sat next to you, talked to you, danced with you, flattered you. No, no. I laughed at their rotten mortician jokes. And at that party afterwards, it was painfully obvious that those jokes turned your stomach. But I laughed for three hours at a party where we were the only women there who weren't paid to be there. <laughs> really a good sport. Tell me something, Mary. Doesn't it ever bother you that you were the obvious favorite of a group of men who spent all their time with dead people? <laughs> And look, everyone has dates that don't work out. Rejection. That's what we're talking about, Mary. Rejection. Say it. I want to hear you say it. Rejection. <laughs> you can't even say it with conviction. So, Anne, everyone's been rejected. Everyone but you. That's not true. Tell me one instance. There have been plenty of cases. Tell me. One humiliating instance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, a couple of years ago, I was dating a guy, and I decided to break it off. And then uh, three months later, when I changed my mind, I called him, and he was dating someone else. <laughs> you call that rejection? Okay, all right, maybe that wasn't the perfect I'll example. I'll tell you rejection, Mary. Rejection is dressing for dates who don't show, waiting for people who don't call, giving a party for someone who's left the country. Oh, come on, Sue Ann, what's the point? Rejection is cooking dinner for a man's entire family. Eleven people, Mary. Eleven Hungarian people. <laughs> cooking dinner for six hours and having none of them show up. You don't forget a thing like that. No, I'm sure you don't. Your butcher doesn't forget it either. <laughs> Ever try to return eight pounds of filet stripped for stroganoff? <laughs> no. That's rejection. Those are all actual true life examples of rejection. Oh, Sue Ann. And every one of them happened to my sister. <laughs> okay, I hate it tonight. I really hated it. I hate seeing a friend hurt. And the thing that makes it worse with you, Sue Ann, is you, 
You pretend it doesn't matter. You never let people see how you really feel. I'm not a schoolgirl, Mary. Life is too short to give in to things. Oh! Oh, will you... Oh, for pizza! Well, how do they expect you to make a chocolate fondue on a dump? I, I can't even... the maximum security prisons, convicts everywhere are raving about Dragnet, the cop show classic on Nick at Night. It's non-stop, full-tilt, rat-a-tat cop action that put me in the slammer for 15 to 20. Jack H. Burns, Barton Correctional Facility for Men. Even though I bludgeoned the man with a hammer, they were very polite when they busted me. I gotta give them credit. Hugh Breen, Death Row, San Quentin. Dragnet, it's the cop classic to watch while you're doing time or any time, every night on Nick at Night. When he asked what she wore, it was always red and all. So sensuous, so alluring, so inviting. Red door, the irresistible fragrance from Elizabeth Arden. Open it. My dad was uh, 18 when he started selling automobiles. He sold the Dickens out of them. We're an automobile family. I was one of the, the first 32 retailers of Saturns in the nation. The Saturn way was to not rush somebody. We let the customer walk around and look. Some people were so surprised by that, they'd get in the car and drive off. Sometimes mad. How you doing? After we explained it to them, they liked it a lot. I wish my daddy was still around to see this Saturn thing, but I don't know. It's different. Shoppers Food Warehouse buys fresh from the source and we pass the savings on to you. Our beautiful produce departments are filled with farm fresh produce and every item is total warehouse price. And warehouse prices like RC or 7-Up, Diet or Regular, or Diet Right Cola, $2.77. Breyer's Ice Cream, Light Ice Milk, or Frozen Yogurt, two twenty two, dollars And Eckridge Smoked Sausage, all varieties, one seventy seven dollars a pound. Fresh from the source at Shoppers, your savings store. When I watch Get Smart, sure I dig the classic gadgets, the classic threads, the classic bad guys. But man, there's more. And the purple water runs uphill. Because Get Smart is like a poem. The blue sun melts the red snow. There'll be bluebirds over the white clips of Dover. It's a metaphor. I lost my day. They may call them passwords, but man, I call it poetry. Classic poetry. Get Smart. Weeknights at 8.30, 7.30 Central on Nick at Night. Room. It was the dullest, dreariest, most depressing weekend I ever spent in my life. Just awful. You're not saying that just to make me feel good. <laughs> Don't look to me for any sympathy, Mayor. The high point of my weekend was killing two flies with one swat. <laughs> Morning. Hi, Hello. Chris. I was just telling Tad Furry about my weekend in Chicago. Uh-huh. Sounded like you girls were having quite a time. Oh, yeah. Well, I wanted to explain to you about that phone call. Oh, don't feel you have anything to explain to me, Mary. No, 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 Mr. Grant. Really, I would like to. Why? Because when I called you, all I could hear was shrieks and giggles and the sound of drunken laughter? No, Mr. Grant. Really, there is a perfectly logical explanation for what you heard. Oh, really, Mary? And what is it? We were having an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> you were kidding, weren't you, Mary? She's only kidding, Mary. You were kidding, weren't you, Mary? She's only kidding, Mary. You, you are, you are kidding, aren't you, Mary? Aren't you? But she's got to be kidding. I know you're kidding, Mary, aren't you? Mary? I'm sure she's kidding. Mary, tell me you're kidding. Nick at Night presents TV Land's favorite almost working thespian. Bobby Wheeler, the great actor. While most know Bobby as an energetic young cab driver, who can forget his timeless performance in Charles Darwin tonight? 
or his tear-jerking scenes on daytime TV. Don't cry. Or his mastery of the most coveted role in the history of the theater. The Easter Bunny is also a serious artist, too. Watch Bobby Wheeler. Classic actor, classic cab driver, average bunny. Weeknights on Taxi, here on Nick at Night. Tomorrow morning, get up at five. Dang. Dang. Wake up. That's what Dave Thomas does to get everything for Wendy's Garden Spot Salad Bar. He gets the best tomatoes, sweetest bell peppers, crunchiest carrots, vegetables fresh from the farm. Because that's what Wendy's Salad Do-It-Yourself is loving their salads. Wendy's Garden Spot Salad Bar. You can't make a fresher salad. Unless you get up with Dave. Already? It's the ultimate test of a household cleaner. The Polish Sausage Test. New 409 glass and surface cleaner not only cuts the grease, it cleans the glass, even grease on glass, without streaking. New 409 glass and surface cleaner. It cleans the grease, it cleans the glass. I hate blind dates. When life turns up to heat, he's here. Nothing protects you like Degree Antiperspirant. It's body heat activated to release extra protection. Jeff? Hi. Degree. Your body heat turns it on. Swamis go for meditation. Vampires need to bite. But if you're hooked on classic TV, you, you need, need Nick, Nick at night. night. Go away now. You'll miss the happy homemaker. Nobody misses a vain, selfish, egotistical, middle-aged shrew. Of course we do. Stay tuned. The happy homemaker continues next on Nick at Night. Who can turn the world on with her smile? You can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell, why don't you take it You're gonna make it after needed a job. They needed a coach. Both had a lot to learn. Grab a front row seat as Nick at Night brings back a show that definitely deserves a second look. Return to the days when sneakers were affordable, shorts were short, and basketball was still a metaphor for life. You remember. Ken Howard is the White Shadow. Oh. The White Shadow. Oh. Saturdays at 10, 9 central, only on Nick at Night. There's a proven winner in mustards. In a nationwide taste test, Hellman's Dijon A's Creamy Mustard Blend beat the leading mustard by two to one. You know, when I opened up that lunchbox and I saw that my sweetheart had made that ham sandwich with delicious Hellman's Dijon A's, well, I knew I was in love. Oh, nothing beats my Hellman's Dijon thought they'd gone to retire, maybe to play shuffleboard, but they had other ideas. And now they're why most of your calls go to the same area code. Call AT&T now and you could pay less for them. Spend $40 or more a month, we'll take 25% off your favorite area code, plus 15% off your other calls. Guaranteed, with no monthly fee, call 1-800-426-4752. Real savings made simple. Just another part of the iPlan. Cliffhanger is the summer's first blockbuster. A fantastic ten, pulse-pounding suspense. 
Stallone is better than ever. A pure adrenaline rush. Hang on for the ultimate action-adventure thriller. Cliffhanger. Rated R. Now playing in a theater near you. Wow, tortilla chips. Not ordinary tortilla chips. Our new chachos are flour tortilla chips. Flour? We're making new keeper chachos. We're making new keeper chachos. Lightly crispy chachos. Flour tortilla chips. Hey, we're making cheesy quesadilla. We're making cinnamon crispagna. And if I want to dip it all, we're making restaurant style original. New keeper chachos. Lightly crispy flour tortilla chips. Hey. Sue Ann is back. Did I miss anything? <laughs> no, 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 nothing. No, actually, you did. You see, uh, Mary tried to attack me, but I fought her off. <laughs> the Happy Homemaker continues next on Nick at Night. dragging this morning. Mm, it's one of those days when you just can't get your brain started. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Which gives certain people a big advantage. Really? My heart's pounding, my skin's aglow, I feel radiant. Do you know why? You're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm physically fit. Taking up jogging, it's the latest thing. Ted, people have been jogging for years. Well, I didn't know that. I thought they were just people without cars. <laughs> I tell you, it feels good, good, good to be alive. <laughs> Ted, if you want to stay, stay, stay alive, don't yell outside my office in the morning. I'm sorry, Louis, I have so much energy. Uh, you don't have any energy at all in the morning, do you? I don't need any. My only physical activity is retching. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I'm a dynamo. <laughs> and I owe it all to jogging, Lou. Oh, when did you take up jogging? This is my first day. I better go down to the park when I get myself in the proper mood. I certainly don't want to look like you. <laughs> Ted, now I'm in the mood. Ah! Oh. Hey, Mary. This birthday party you're having for Sue Ann, would you do me a big favor? Pick up a present for me. I have the vaguest idea what to get her. Right. What do you get for the woman who's had everyone? <laughs> Come on, Mr. Grant, don't ask me to shop for you. Please, Mary, just get Sue Ann anything that you think she might like. Here, here's $20. Oh, Lou, you're so thoughtful. <laughs> oh, look, Lou, just because it's my birthday, you don't have to go to all the trouble of going out and buying me a present. I'll do it for you. <laughs> well, will $20 be enough? Oh, $20 would be fine. Oh, I bet you say that to all the guys. <laughs> Get yourself a nice card, too. Uh, something sincere. <laughs> Incidentally, Mary, do you mind if I invite someone else to the party Saturday night? Oh, you have a date? Oh, Mary, really? If I had a date, would I be coming to your party? <laughs> no, it's my sister, Lila. You know the one who does the cooking show in Augusta, Georgia? Oh, yeah, right. She's coming for a visit. Oh, that's nice. Yes, she's going to spend her vacation here. Actually, we've only seen each other a few times in the last 20 years. This will give us a chance to get reacquainted. Oh, you must be really looking forward to it. Yes, like cramps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary, I know it's awful to talk about one's sister that way, but as far back as I can remember, I've, I've always felt that Lila was a, a rival. I used to be afraid to have boys pick me up at the house for fear they'd see her. I used to have my dates pick me up on the street. So that's how it started. Well, come on, man. It's natural for sisters to have a kind of rivalry when they're growing up, but you're an adult now. Oh, maybe you're right. So I was jealous of her when she was 14 and I was 19. Right. I'm sure it'll be different now that we're both 35. <laughs> I'll get it, man. Hiya, Georgia. Hi, 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 Georgia. Hi, Where's Ted? He'll be right up. He's not as fast as he used to be before he got physically fit. <laughs> well, 
Well, still, I have to admire him for sticking to it, don't you? No. <laughs> His legs are sore, he walks funny, and the worst part is he's so tired he conks out in the middle of the evening, still wearing his red suit. Oh. <laughs> it's like sleeping with Captain Marvel. <laughs> hey, Ted. Hi, guys. Hi, Ted. How you feeling? Oh, never felt better, Lou. Never felt better. I'm like a little man, Murray. <laughs> I went all to jogging. Yeah. <laughs> I recommend it to both of you. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Sue Ann, happy birthday. Thank you, Lou. Mm -hmm. Here's the present you got me. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I'll put it with the others. Oh, Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hi, Sue Ann. Surprise! It's not a surprise party, George, yet she expected it. Oh, expected! <laughs> Ann, happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Mary. I see Lila isn't here yet. No, not yet. Well, she'll be along any time now. She had these friends in Minneapolis she wanted to visit. Ah. Oh. oh, look at all those wonderful gifts. Would anyone mind if I open them now? I, I really won't be able to enjoy the party if I don't. Yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> oh, and what have we here? <laughs> it's from Lou. <laughs> <laughs> to the most voluptuous, exciting, desirable creature on God's earth. Lou, <laughs> with admiration and lust. Oh, Lou, it's beautiful. Oh, you should. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, uh, wear it in good health. Thank you, dear. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> doorbell, doorbell. That must be Lila. Hello. Hi. So good to see you, dear. Uh, I want you to meet all my friends. Oh. And stay awake from the sophisticated hunk with a hole in his sock. He's <laughs> Everybody. This is my own little sister, Lila. Lila, this is Mary. Hi, Lila. Mary. And Georgette. Hello, Georgette. And Ted. Hi. <laughs> Murray. Hi, Hi, Murray. And Lou. Hello, Lou. Oh, you know, I'm just so happy to meet y'all. I mean, Sue Ann has told me so much about you that I just feel at home already. Sue Ann tells us you're from Dixie. That's right. My wife and I use your cups a lot. <laughs> Uh, Sue Ann tells me that you're the anchor man at WJM. That must be very exciting. Yes, 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 really. Really is. <laughs> You'll have to excuse him. Lately, he does this every night. <laughs> Ted, wake up. Oh, I was having the most extraordinary dream. I was wrestling in the mud with Indira Gandhi. <laughs> Who is she? Uh, Lila, is this your first trip to Minneapolis? Oh, yes. Yeah? This is the man I was telling you about, dear. Oh, it's such a lovely city. Mm. Do you know what I just found out? My favorite team, the Atlanta Falcons, is going to play your Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> You, you like football? Oh, does a ham dog like possum? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just hope I can get a ticket to the game. I've got a pair of season passes. I'll take you. Oh, are you sure you'd like to? Uh, does a polar bear like herring? <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Come on, let me show you the Minneapolis skyline. Excuse us. <laughs> Sue Ann, would you like a drink? What's the use? Lala will probably take that away from me, too. Oh, come on, Sue Ann. Don't talk like that. Mary, it's been this way all our lives. Everything I always wanted, Lila took. I was a senior in high school, pinned to the captain of the football team. A big, blue-eyed, beautiful Adonis. She took him away from me. And tonight, I specifically asked her to let Lou alone, and you saw what happened. I'm sorry, Mary. But I'm afraid there's only one thing for me to do under the circumstances. Now, I don't mean to break up your party, but I really think it would be better all around if 
I went out there and pushed her off the balcony. <laughs> Ted, if you're going my way, we can share an elevator. Unless you want to use the stairs for the exercise. Oh, no, no, I don't. No. <laughs> hey, take oh, it easy. I would just be... <laughs> Come on, Mayor. Yeah, I am. As a matter of fact, there's a program on at 8 I want to see, and I'm late. Just want to finish this. Okay, Murr, last one out is a... Happy homemaker. Hello, Murray, dear. What a lovely necktie. Oh, that color is so becoming on you. <laughs> Brings out the veins in your eyes. <laughs> I know you were on your way home, dear. I don't want to hold you. Say hello, Marie, for me. Good night, dear. See you tomorrow. I thought he'd never leave. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I caught you. Now we can talk. Yeah, well, Sue Ann, I, there's this program that I have that I want to only take an hour or so. Yeah, well, it's, it's sort of a documentary. It's on at eight. Mary, I had the most thrilling experience last night. It sheds new light on the Crimean War. <laughs> Do you realize how upset? said I was with Lila at the party. But when we got home, we opened up to each other like we never had before, and I realized how wrong it was to hold on to these petty little jealousies. I mean, so what if she does a few things that upset me? I'm sure I do some things that upset her. But the important thing is that she's my sister, and I love her. Sue Ann, that's terrific. Oh, matter of fact, the thing that kills me is she'll be leaving in a few days, and we'll have so little time together. Oh, hi, Mary. Hi. Guess what, Sue Ann? The greatest thing has happened. I've been offered a chance to audition for the at-home show on Channel 10 right here in Minneapolis. Isn't that fabulous? And if I get it, we'll be together just like when we were kids. Oh, come on. I'll buy you dinner and we'll celebrate. Oh, Lila, that's marvelous. I'm so happy. But listen, I tell you what. You go on down. I'll meet you in the lobby. Okay, dear. There's just something I have to say to Mary. Bye, Mary. MacGyver. Before Phelps, there was Smart. Maxwell Smart. TV Land's original secret agent who simple-mindedly defined government intelligence with counterintelligence, anti-counterintelligence, and anti-counter-anti-intelligence. So get the original. Maxwell Smart. He makes every mission impossible on Get Smart. Weeknights on Nick at Night. How does a guy like me charm a girl like her? The critics are falling for three of hearts. Four stars, a refreshing, heartfelt, and funny movie. I'm a male escort. Somebody hired me to show you a good time. <laughs> yeah. Four stars, one terrific movie. She ate it up. The two of you are like friends now or something? Daring, decadent, and definitely different. Truly a romance for the 90s. Any woman, any time, any place. Three of hearts, rated R, starts Friday. It's Nick at Night. Makes the world seem bright. So tune it in and keep on watching Nick at Night. All night, every night. Choosing your first new car sure can be complicated. There are cars that promise you safety. Cars that are well-built and well-backed. Cars that won't leave you stranded. Cars that give you a break on the price. Even cars that help with your down payment. But Chevrolet makes it easy to get all of the above in the Chevy Cavalier, the lowest priced car in America with standard anti lock brakes. Test drive Chevy Cavalier today at your neighborhood Chevrolet dealer. It's spring break, but this year things are kind of quiet in the usual hot spots because everybody's in Lake Edna for the Colonel's spring break. Get KFC favorites like world famous chicken, mashed potatoes, and gravy. Delicious coleslaw and biscuits. The Colonel Spring Break at KFC. A great break for everyone. Well, almost everyone. We are KFC. We get chicken right. Sue Ann is the happy homemaker. Always done a super job. <laughs> the happy homemaker continues on Nick at Night. Hi, guys. Oh, hi. I had a physical, and guess what? I've got a bad knee. I can't jog anymore. You know, knees are funny. My brother-in-law stayed out of the war because of a trick knee. My uncle stayed out of the war because of a trick nose. A trick nose? He couldn't smell anything. How did that keep him out of the war? The day he got drafted, he walked in front of a garbage truck. 
Oh. Did it hurt him very badly? No, it was parked. Oh. It was the motorcycle that hurt him. Right. Which he would have seen if he hadn't walked in front of the garbage truck. Which he wouldn't have done if he could have smelled. Which he would have if he hadn't had a trick nose. Wasn't much of a war, anyhow. <laughs> well, I have to be going. Bye, Murray. Bye, Mary. Bye, Ken. Bye, honey. Bye, Sue Ann. Bye, Sue Ann. Nice talking to you. <laughs> Hi, people. You got a bad knee. I can't jog anymore. Is Lou in? Uh, no, he's not. He took your sister to lunch uh, before her audition. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, I certainly wouldn't have time to chase men if I were being auditioned in an hour. Sue Ann, you'd have time to chase men if you were being embalmed in an hour. <laughs> Hi, Lou. Did you have a nice lunch? Oh, yeah. Lila and I had a terrific lunch. We went to this little Armenian place. Food was just tops. Your sister loved it. Oh, really? You, Lou, you know, I really love Armenian food, too. No kidding? Well, maybe sometime, when you're not busy, you can get your sister to take you there. <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, hi, Lila. Yes, she is. Just a minute. Okay. Hello? Yes, dear. What? You did? Why, that's wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I'll see you at home, dear. She got the job. Hey, that's great. Hot coconuts. I knew she'd do it. Why are you all so happy for my sister? You like her better than you like oh, me, no, don't you? No, Sue Ann. Come on, why do you insist on making comparisons? Your sister's popularity is no reflection on you. Why? It has nothing to do with you. We like your sister strictly for herself. Right, she's sweet and lovely and fun to be with. And you're not. <laughs> Can you be? I'm talking to you guys. What is it? A woman just left here in tears. She's been upset for days. She has a real problem with her sister. And what do you do? I just took her sister off for shashlik. But did you have to rub Sue Ann's nose in it? In the shashlik? No! The fact that you prefer Lila's company to hers. Oh. And you, Murray, can you never pass up an opportunity to insult her? That's telling them, Mary. And as for you, Ted... I've got a bad knee. <laughs> Even you should have been sensitive enough to know that Sue Ann needed our sympathy. I just can't believe how callous you all were. I'm going to call her up right now, and if she's not busy, we are marching up there to apologize. You're right, Mary. We should all really be ashamed of ourselves. Hi, may I speak to Sue Ann, please? She... What? She did... Okay, thank you. Sue Ann just told the station manager that she's not going to do her show today. She went home in a state of deep emotional depression. Okay, now you've upset her to the point where she can't do her show. What are we going to do now? Maybe we can get a sister to fill in for her. Oh. <laughs> She's not here. Sue Ann, I have to talk to you about... Oh, my... <laughs> Haven't you ever seen my bedroom before, ma'am? No, no, I would have remembered this. <laughs> oh, Mary, if these walls could talk. <laughs> who cares? That's all over now. It's, everything's finished. Sue Ann, I know you're upset, but how could you walk out on your show like that? Everyone's so worried about you. Don't be ridiculous. Nobody misses a vain, selfish, egotistical, middle-aged shrew. Of course we do. <laughs> we, we all miss you. Murray, Ted, oh. Lou. Sure, sure. Well, my, my, just look who stopped by to pay you a visit, Sue Ann. <laughs> 
Hi, Sue Ann. <laughs> Hello, Murray. Uh, I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Uh, I hope you come back to the station real soon. You've only been gone a couple of hours, and uh, I've missed you already. Why? You have nobody to insult? No, I've still got Ted. But it's not the same. With you, it's a fair fight. With Ted, I could win a battle of wits without even showing up. <laughs> Thank you, Murray. <sighs> well, I, uh, I really uh, love your bedroom, Sue Ann. Did you decorate it yourself? Did you have a sex maniac come in? <laughs> Hey, Sue Ann, I just zinged you. Don't you want to zing me back? Sue Ann. Sue Ann, look. Look at this. What do you see? A kind, sweet, and gentle man. Sue Ann, we're going to get you the best doctor in the world. Well, well, look who else is here. <laughs> Sue Ann? You remember Ted from the newsroom? Of course. Have you been, Ted? Oh, swell, swell, Sue Ann. Oh. <laughs> what a great bedroom, Sue Ann. <coughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I just came to tell you that I'm sorry about what I said in the office before. Ted, uh, don't. <laughs> you know how it is, Sue Ann. Sometimes you say things you don't mean. I'd really feel terrible if I did anything to make you leave the station. We should come back to work, Sue Ann. We all uh, really miss you. It's me, Sue Ann. Come sit beside me. Sue Ann, uh, I, I, uh, I hope you didn't misunderstand about my taking Lila out. Uh, the only reason I wanted to show her a good time is uh, because she's your sister. There's no point in lying, Lou. I know I'm a loser. That's not so. Well, then tell me one good thing about me, anything at all. Well... <laughs> You're attractive, very attractive. Pretty? You bet. <laughs> Glamorous? Well, <laughs> yeah, real glamorous. Sexy, provocative, a tawny, sensual beast? <laughs> yes, a beast. <laughs> A sensual beast. <laughs> Sue Ann, come on back to work. Yeah, we really miss you. Well, your place isn't the same without you. <laughs> Sue Ann, do it for us. 
I don't know if I'll ever work again. I think I'd rather just spend the rest of my days here in solitude with my memories, my vibrating bed. Hi, y'all! Oh, Minnie Pearl is home. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Lana. Sorry, what you doing in bed? I just don't feel very well. Yeah? But you were feeling fine when I went out to take the job this morning. Sue Ann, does this have anything to do with what we were talking about the other night? Of course not. Sue Ann, be honest with me. Are you unhappy because I'm taking this job here in Minneapolis? Me unhappy? Because if you are, I don't care how wonderful the job is, or what a great opportunity it is for me, or how much it pays. Lila, are you saying you'd give up this job on Channel 10 if I asked you to? You care that much about me? Of course I do. You're my only sister, and I love you. You just say the word, and I'll go over and tell those people at Channel 10 that I don't want their silly old job. I'll go over there right now. Oh, Lila, dear. You don't have to do that. You can call them from here. <laughs> Mary. Mary. Everybody's talking about Mary. Watch the Mary Tyler Moore Show every weeknight, and you'll begin to understand what makes her so appealing, so charming, so captivating, so alluring, so intriguing, so engaging, so irresistible. 30 million Frenchmen can't be wrong. For a good time, watch Mary every weeknight at 9.30, 8.30 Central, only on Nick at Night. What would you do with a Motorola pager? Never miss a meeting. I don't know. Box on hold. Pager. Oh, you got the pager number right? Yeah. We're going out. Yeah. Cool, this works. What would you do? Anything. Anytime. Anywhere I want. Really? A Motorola pager lets you stay in touch with the important people in your life while doing the things important to you. The affordable, portable Motorola pager. When was the last time you had an irresistible hot fudge sundae? Well, right now, Baskin Robbins is having a sale. You can get a two-scoop ice cream or regular yogurt sundae for $1.79. So what are you waiting for? Well, it's fine for seekers of pleasure. Why are calorie-conscious people seeking Tropicana Twister Light? It lacks the sweet discipline of denial. Don't deny yourself these pleasures. Only Tropicana Twister Light has an exciting taste like this that's low in calories. Calories are a big part of me. Because it's the first bottle juice drink with NutraSweet. We're all a Twitter. Tropicana Twister Light. Flavors Mother Nature never intended, but should have. Pity they won't be serving it at the club. There's someone in your house. Good evening. I'm Alfred Hitchcock. It's Alfred Hitchcock presents Every Night on Nick at Night. JM, you've got time to do your show, and we have a new show to play. Right, right, Let's right. go. Um, I'll be right with you. I forgot my purse. spent five years stuck in Louis' cage? Guess who? One tough way to become a part of our television heritage. Actor J. Allen Thomas started as an extra, but his role soon earned a name. Jeff? Yeah. Then, 
lines. It's your mother calling. And even dramatic moments. I think the deal stinks. The whole thing stinks. Watch the emergence of Jeff, the other guy in Taxi's cage, only on Nick at Night. This is Mr. I have a degree in chips. This is Mr. Phipps. She's Miss Low Fat is my middle name. Hello, Mr. Phipps again. Mr. Oh, what's one more anyway? Mr. Phipps Tater Crisps. Mr. Everybody's can't get enough of a good thing snack. I'm, I'm finished. The French have a word for beauty. Lancôme Paris. And you're invited to celebrate Paris a la Lancôme with the Lancôme Parisienne shoulder sack. Celebrate the brilliance of Rouge Absolu lip color, luxurious Tresor bath gel, Emulsil for lusher lashes, from the world's beauty authority, the Lancomer Parisienne, your free gift to celebrate with a French baguette to go. Now with any 1750 Lancome purchase at Hex. The American Dimensions Collection from Ethan Allen, eclectic and most agreeably priced for people who really love to live at home. Right now, there's a sale going on at your local Ethan Allen. If you're feeling bluesy and a little uptight, you could use a hit of TV Delight. Brought to you by Nick at Night. now you'll miss the happy homemaker nobody misses a vain selfish egotistical middle-aged shrew of course we do stay tuned the happy homemaker continues next on nick at night who can turn the world on with her smile You can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell, why don't you take it You're gonna make it after It's known for great original writing, yet many of the Bob Newhart Show's lines were not their own. I am strong. I am invincible. You are a woman. <laughs> Those lines were popular song lyrics, and they're part of our television heritage. The show quoted everything from Calypso... Come, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. ...to jazz. I love coffee. <laughs> I love tea. I love the Java Jive, and it loves me. So listen to the lyrics of the Bob Newhart Show, here on Nick at Night. a body good with vitamin A to help keep skin smooth, calcium for strong bones, and protein to help build muscle. When you drink milk, it shows. She likes milk and it shows. It does a body good. Enjoying the Nick at Night broadcast reimagined? Want to see more? Well, consider visiting our Patreon. That's right, our Patreon. A community of classic TV connoisseurs like yourself. Visit patreon.com slash Nick at Night to learn more. What could a minute cost if your 800 service goes down? If you're a player on Wall Street, $910,000. But with us, you're always in the game. Introducing the AT&T 800 service, never miss a call guarantee. Now if there's a problem, we can reroute your calls in less than a second. Sign up for the never miss a call guarantee. It's the number one reason AT&T 800 service is always the smartest play. AT&T, the best in the business. 
guaranteed. Shop. My mama told me you better shop around. Shop, shop around. You better shop around. My mama told me you better shop around. I always go to the shopping center nine out of ten people use. The genuine C and P telephone yellow pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A ballot landing company. Sue Ann is back. Did I miss anything? <laughs> No, actually, you did. You see, uh, Mary tried to attack me, but I fought her off. <laughs> the Happy Homemaker continues next on Nick at Night. I don't believe it. How can they cancel Sue Ann's show just like that? Ratings, Mary. Not enough people are watching her show. Well, it still isn't fair. Right. There are much worse things on the air. Hi, guys. I rest my case. Did you hear about Sue Ann being canceled? Yeah, Ted, we heard. But she'll get something else. The rough thing is that we won't be seeing that much of her anymore. <laughs> Lou, we gotta do something to boost up my ratings, otherwise I'm gonna be next. Please, Ted, you're making my heart race. I'm serious, Lou. Gonna zap up my show and I've got just a thing. Every night near the end of the news, I'll make a telephone call to a different world leader. And I'll talk to him about the complex political, economic, and social problems that confront our planet. Like, like one night I'll call Edie, I mean, in Africa. And I'll say, what's happening in your part of the world, Edie? And she'll tell me. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I got it, I got it. You want to sleep on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi. hi, Sue Ann. Well, I, I suppose you've all heard the news. Yeah, Sue Ann, and I'm sorry. I, I really am. Yeah, me too. Uh, tough break, Sue Ann. You have no idea how upset we all are. Hi, Sue Ann. Here you got canned. Do <laughs> you have any idea what you're going to do now? Well, not, not exactly. I, I have decided I'm going to work out my contract. So, even if I... I won't be doing my own show. I'll, I'll still be working here at WJM. Oh, Sue Ann, that's wonderful. Did you hear that, Mr. Grant? Sue Ann won't be leaving WJM after all. Oh, boy. That's, that's great. That's great, Sue Ann. Re really great. <laughs> Program manager will try to get me to quit by making my life miserable around here, but I'm determined not to buckle. Good for you. You just stick to your guns. Thank you, Mary. I'll show them. Sue Ann Nivens doesn't give in without a fight. That's not what the cab drivers tell me. <laughs> Dear sweet Murray. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I'm not leaving WJM. You have no idea how I'd miss you. I'd probably cry every time I looked at a melon. <laughs> Lou. Come in. I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciated your concern. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, you're welcome. Uh, and I wanted to tell you, Sue Ann, I think you're taking this whole thing very well. <laughs> Why not? I've just made up my mind I'm going to be very strong, mm. very brave. <laughs> oh, Lou. <laughs> I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> Come on, Sue Ann. It's not that bad. Lou, that show was the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, second best. <laughs> Lou, what's going to become of me? Oh, Sue Ann. <laughs> Come on. Sue Ann, don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> oh, Lou, you're so good. So strong. And such nice, chubby little fingers. <laughs> you're like ten tiny sausages. <laughs> Come on, Sue Ann. It's a place of business. Will you do me a favor, Lou, please? Does that have anything to do with my fingers? I want a job in the newsroom. You what? Any kind of job. I don't care what. Please don't turn me down, Lou. I never turn you down. 
Oh, hey, Sue Ann, I can't give you a job in the newsroom. You don't like me. I knew, I knew it would come to this. I, I let you take advantage of me. <laughs> now you have nothing but contempt. I, I knew this would happen. Okay, come on, Sue Ann, that's not true. I'd love to see you working here. Imagine spending eight hours a day with you, day in, day out. Unfortunately, I can't hire you. Shucks, what a shame. Why can't you? Huh? What? Oh, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's because of uh, Mary. It's up to Mary, you see. Mary is the producer, and she makes all those decisions. So it's out of my chubby little hands. <laughs> Would you ask her for me? You want me to ask her? Oh, please, please. No. I'm desperate. I'm, I have no place to turn. I'm weak and helpless. I'm lost in my own sorrow. Uh, okay, okay, I'll ask her. Swell. <laughs> Thanks. Mary, I came over here because I made a pretty important decision. And I wanted to tell you about it. Oh? Yeah. I've decided to give you a lot more authority in the newsroom. Wow, Mr. Grant, that's terrific. It's really, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. What made you suddenly decide that? Well, I was sitting in the bar just now having a beer. I held up my glass and I looked at it. You know what I saw? A reflection of my face. But I looked like an old man, Mary. It was my face, but I had all white hair. You had white hair? <laughs> From the beer fall. <laughs> it made me realize something. I'm not getting any younger. And that's when I decided that now was the time to start delegating more of my authority. So, from now on, little Mary Richards is going to be making some very big decisions. Well, Mr. Grant, gee, that's, I don't know what to say. It's really nice that you have that kind of confidence in me. From now on, you're going to be totally in charge of hiring people. When you want to hire somebody, you don't have to check with me. It'll be your decision. Wow. <laughs> And if you don't want to hire someone, that'll be your decision, too. <laughs> Do you think you can handle that, Mary? Oh, Mr. Grant, I know I can. Good. Sue Ann wants a job in the newsroom. <laughs> oh, gee. So she'll do anything. I said it's up to you. So that's what this is all about. Hmm? Giving me more responsibility. It has nothing to do with seeing your face in a beer glass. <laughs> Mary, how can I turn her down? She feels I owe it to her because of, you know. Uh. Hello, Mary. Sue Ann. Well, well, look who's here, Mr. Grant. Sue Ann. Hello, Lou. Hi, Sue Ann. May I come in? Yes. <laughs> Mary, I couldn't wait till tomorrow, so I thought I'd drop by tonight and find out what you decided. <laughs> well, uh, gee, Sue Ann, Mr. Grant, uh, just uh, told me about your, uh, you know, um, offer, and, uh, wow, I mean, I'm just so overwhelmed, you know, I, I just uh, haven't had a chance to decide. Well, then, let me just say this, dear. Now, I know you and I have not been the, the best of friends. Well, and there have been times when we've had our differences. But, Mary, if you hire me, I'll do a wonderful job for you, and I'll be grateful forever, I swear it. I'm sorry, Sue Ann. I, I can't. I hate to say no, but I, I have to think about what's right for the newsroom. I hope you understand. Mary's decision. <laughs> All right, Mary. I, listen, I, I understand. I, 
Don't feel guilty. It... No hard feelings. Goodbye, Lou. Mm. Thanks for trying. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> How could you do that to me? I feel like such a rat. That was a lousy thing to do, Mr. Grant. <laughs> you're, you're right, Mary. You're right. I... I just didn't know any other way to get out of it because of, you know. You know. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> Listen, no, I, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. It was really rotten of me putting you on the spot like that. And I promise you, I'll, 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 never, I'll never do anything like that again. <laughs> You forgive me? No. <laughs> Look, what would it take for you to forgive me? You tell Sue Ann you lied, you tell her it was your idea, you tell her you're sorry, you tell me you're sorry, and you promise me you will never put me in a position like that again. Oh, the hell with it. <laughs> Nick at night is comfy as your favorite jeans The ones that fit just right Comfy, 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 that's Nick at night Clorox Cleanup Spray makes tough stains. Do you really think naphtha can be replaced with a non-flammable solvent? In 1929, she was the only woman and the only PhD chemist in the physics lab. But over the years, she was responsible for 29 different patents. Hello, I'm Sylvia Stacer. Dr. Stacer created a new career path for women and for her company the same company that leads the nation in patents granted to women over the last decade. We think Dr. Stacer would be pleased. Dow lets you do great things. Recently, an object was sighted. It was just big. Too big to measure with the human eye. They say it could show up anywhere. Pizza Hut! Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. Out of sight! Big. 21 slices. I can handle it. On a totally different crust. Wow! For a ridiculously low $10.99. <laughs> Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. The biggest pizza you can get delivered. Also from Pizza Hut Delivery, salad for four. Some mountains are over 500 million years old. And while water still covers over two-thirds of them, the rest. Look! Ben, look again at the double take. It's part of our television heritage. Classic television isn't just great acting, it's great reacting. But classic double take can be quick or with a delay. Here's the rarely attempted double double take. Left, right, or even over the shoulder. It's the double take. Definitely worth a second look here on Nick at Night. Sue Ann is the happy homemaker. Always done a super job. <laughs> the happy homemaker continues on Nick at Night. <laughs> okay, get ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Be sure to stay tuned to WJM for another hilarious episode of My Mother the Car. The fun 
begins when Mom gets a lube job. <laughs> that was wonderful, sweetheart. I never thought I'd say this to a man, but get your hand off my knee. <laughs> Hi, Sue Ann. I thought I'd stop by and see how you're doing. Hello, Mary. I'm doing fine, just fine. So this is where they have you working. This is where they have me working. Cozy. It is that. <laughs> of course, it gets a little cramped for a woman with a bosom. <laughs> You'd do fine in here, dear. <laughs> oh, Mary, I'm really glad you're here. I mean, listen, if you've been feeling bad about not giving me a job in the newsroom, don't, because as you can see, I'm doing very well. <clears throat> of course, working from four to midnight kind of interferes with my love life. <laughs> but then again, so did working nine to five. <laughs> Sue Ann, I feel just rotten about this. Well, I, Mary, I, why in the world should you feel rotten? After all, I have you to thank for putting me here. Sue so, Ann, I had no idea. I didn't realize oh, no, that they... Not another word. You're here. You sit right down here. I want you to see exactly how it is. Well, no, thanks, Sue Ann. That's, that's all right. You won't even do that for me? Oh. Well, sure, of course. Mary, say hi to Sam, our engineer. Hello. <laughs> Oh, Mary, don't mind Sam. That's just his way of saying hi. <laughs> when he gets to glad to see you, you have to worry. You want to wet your whistle? Um, no, no, thank you. I uh, prefer my whistle dry. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful aroma, Mary? It's like living in Fidel Castro's mouth. <laughs> on duty every day. Sometimes I, I get to work with Tiny. He weighs 480 pounds, but he carries it well. <laughs> and fortunately, he doesn't smoke cigars. Well, that, that's good. He chews tobacco. Yeah, be careful on your way out. Don't step in the spittoon. <laughs> oh, I wondered what that was. <laughs> Mary? <laughs> Just seeing what they've got Sue Ann doing, and it made me shudder. Go ahead, Mary. I've changed my mind. Go ahead and hire Sue Ann. <laughs> no. Okay, then. I'll take the responsibility. I'll hire her. Just hold it, Buster. <laughs> Was that Mary? It wasn't me, Lou. <laughs> you can't use me like this, Mr. Grant. You gave me a responsibility, and I took it. It wasn't easy for me, but I made the decision. And I am not going to hire Sue Ann just because everyone feels sorry for her. Mary, what are you doing? We're not allowed to stand up to Lou. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You come with me now. You watch where they've got Sue Ann. Then if you don't want to give her a job, you don't give her a job. All right, fine. Murray? Mm hmm? If... If that were me, I mean, if I were fired, what do you think Lou and Mary would be doing right now? Throwing confetti? <laughs> Dancing in the streets, turning cartwheels, drinking champagne. Right. Anything to cover up their pain. <laughs> okay, three minutes to rehearsal. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, we're looking for Sue Ann Nivens. Oh, she's Aunt Daisy today. Huh? Uh, Aunt Daisy, some people here to see you. <laughs> you look... Go on, say it. I look preposterous. No, 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 no. You look fresh as a daisy. <laughs> Nice hat. Come on, have I sunk so low that, that people are patronizing me with compliments like that? Sue Ann, you're, you're back on television. It's not that bad. Maybe you're right, Mary. Okay, Sue Ann, we're ready to start. Hi, Mucky! I sure wish Aunt Daisy was here to talk to us about our problem. Oh, here she comes. 
good blow. Well, how are my two favorite fluffy little cottontails, Hucky and Mucky? Not so good, Aunt Daisy. Well, why not, Mucky? Because, Sue Ann, you're blocking my shot. <laughs> oh, I thought you said you worked on television before. Well, I'm you sorry. don't know enough to stand oh. on your mark. Well, I, didn't I realize... told them I didn't want her on this show. Well, we'll just have to live with it. Well, if you're going to criticize me, why can't you just come out here and at least have the courtesy to speak in your natural voice? Because, honey, some of us are professionals, and when we get into character, we stay in character, okay? Well... How are my favorite fluffy little cottontails, Hucky and Mucky? Not so good. Hey! Who are those people on my set? This is a clothes rehearsal. They're friends of mine. Uh, uh, Mary, Lou, this is Hucky and Mucky. Hucky and Mucky, this is Mary and Louie. Lou. How do you... Uh, uh, listen, if you don't mind, we're not here to run a social hour. We're here to work. Sue Ann, let's see if we can get through this without your screwing up. Hey, look, fella. You don't have to talk that way to this woman. <laughs> Sue Ann, will you tell your fat friend to get lost? <laughs> you want to come out here and say that? What's the matter? You too fat to come in here? <laughs> <laughs> you're doing? <laughs> yeah. I... I lost my head. Mary, I think you better take me back to the newsroom. Yeah, right. Bye, Suzanne. Oh, I wish you were taking me with you. Yeah, well... I'm really sorry, Sue. Okay, Aunt Daisy, let's take it from the top. I can't take any more. Today was the final humiliation. I was ordered off the set by two rabbits. <laughs> I didn't even get my three months' pay. Sue Ann, I feel just terrible about what you've been going through. I really do. I wish I could help you, but I... I still feel the decision I made was right. Please don't ask me to change my mind. All right, Mary. I won't ask you to change your mind. Lou, ask her to change your mind. <laughs> you bet I will. Mary, where's your compassion? Take a look at this woman. <laughs> Did you ever see anyone so pitiful? <laughs> Mr. Grant, you want me to hire her out of pity? Of course not. It's okay by me. <laughs> Mary, this woman has seen more than just a few summers. I'm not many. <laughs> okay, so she's not perfect. So she's a pain in the rump, a gossip. Throws herself at every pair of pants she sees. Maybe I better just send in a resume. <laughs> Look at this woman. In 20 years, this could be you. <laughs> Mr. Grant, you have got to realize that when you take on responsib responsibility, sometimes... <laughs> It isn't an easy thing to do. You've got to make decisions that are tough and unpleasant and... Sue Ann, you start on Monday. What? We'll give you a job. Oh, Mary. Mary, I'm very grateful. Thank you for saving my job. I won't let you down. Thank you. That was a nice thing you did. That was a terrible thing I did. I hired someone for all the wrong reasons. Not on the basis of merit or qualifications, but simply because I felt sorry for her. Come on, Mary, that's not such a terrible reason. What's wrong with that? 
What's wrong with that? Mr. Grant, there are people who went to journalism school, who were long, hard hours to get a chance at a job in this newsroom. And they deserved it. And now they won't get that chance because I weakened, because I felt guilty, because I had pity for someone. Well, it's not the first time it's happened. <sighs> well, a good news executive wouldn't have done that. I did. When? Seven years ago, a young girl walked into my office. And even though she had never been in a newsroom before, she had the audacity to sputter out a request for a job as an associate producer. You know who I'm talking about? I didn't have very many qualifications, did I? You had zilch. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you the reason why I hired you? A little run. A tiny little run in your stocking on your knee. And you kept trying to cover it up. A little run. And, and, and you noticed that? Well, it's hard not to notice something with two hands, a pocketbook, and a leg over it. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, what kind of a girl is this who is so afraid of a thing like that? Do you think that was a bad reason to hire you? It was kind of sweet. It was damn sweet. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you. There are plenty of times in life when you do the competent, responsible thing. But every once in a while, we need to be damn sweet. If we're lucky, we'll never have to regret it. Mr. Grant, have you ever um, regretted it, I'm hiring me? I've, I've done a, a pretty good job, haven't I? Pretty good? You kidding? You've done a whale of a job. You've been just great. Till you went and hired Sue Ann. <laughs> It's something you weren't supposed to see. It's Jeannie's belly button, and it's part of our television heritage. When I Dream of Jeannie was conceived in 1965, Jeannie's harem costume was considered quite risque. So network censors drew the line right above Barbara Eden's navel. They were even stricter with bathing suits. Larry Hagman somehow managed to get around the belly button rule. And if you look closely on rare occasions, Barbara Eden did too. Don't blink, or you'll miss Jeannie's belly button on I Dream of Jeannie, only on Nick at Night. She lived for the sun. He wanted only the best. Together, they found everything they desired. The Chrysler convertible sale. She discovered the thrill of sun-drenched driving. He found the best, the touch of glove leather. They reveled in America's best-selling beauty. They reveled in the rebate. They reveled in the glorious savings. The Chrysler convertible sale. Don't miss it at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers now. If you're under a physician's care for high blood pressure, ulcers, or asthma, then your choice of a non-prescription pain reliever is especially important for millions of people like you. The one doctors recommend most is Tylenol. When he asked what she wore, it was always red and all. So sensuous, so alluring, so inviting. Red door, the irresistible fragrance from Elizabeth Arden. Personal decision to try better live through television, but to make it right, I've gotta help big at night.
ever love another as much as himself? This Sunday, Very Very Nick at Night brings together the whole saga of an anchor in love. It's Very Very Ted and Georgia. This Sunday at 9, 8 central on Nick at Night. Who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile? Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it. With each glance and every little movement you show, love is all around, no need to waste it. You can never tell why don't you take it. Nick at Night wants to help you get dressed with these beautiful clothes and beautiful combinations. Take a look. Pantsuits, leisure suits, jumpsuits, double knits, and single knits. They're not in catalogs. They're not in stores. They're only on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Just look at that outfit. Incredible. Hey, looking for stripes? Solids? How about a nice plaid? The search is over. We got hats, dresses, jackets, ties, and shirts. We got combinations you've never seen before. For classic TV that never goes out of style, watch the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Weeknights at 10, 9 central on Nick at Night. The following graphic images may prompt feelings of guilt among viewers. New Dan and Pure Indulgence Frozen Yogurt. Very well. Proceed without caution. Weight Watchers free trial offer. Weight Watchers is not a diet. It's a way of life. So this is a picture of me before oh, I joined. This is you? This is great. It's the final week to come to a free trial meeting at the new Weight Watchers. Pay just $12 only if you join. So call 800-333-3000 today. Velveeta cheese spread rustles up a new idea. Get a hot dog and tortilla then. Just throw in some Velveeta. Then roll that up and heat it on up. Velveeta can't be beat up. Nothing less will do, I'm telling you. Not some look-alike sort of cheddar. Or a creamy joy, get the real McCoy. Velveeta cooks much better. Sends force on a quest from TV land. Bringing truth and justice in his hand. It's homogenized. It's the plan. Brought to you by Nick at Night. Tonight's episode, The Prom. Waiting for someone? Not anymore. I was waiting for Buck, my prom date. Prom? Aren't you a little, well, old? I've been waiting for him for 17 <coughs> Years. Wow, this buck must be a pretty special fella. I loved him, milkman, but I've got to get on with my life. Don't give up. Let's take a spin around the block. Maybe you got the address wrong. That wouldn't be your young man, would it? Fuck! Louise? <laughs> that prom dance is over. But you two go out and have a good time tonight. On me. Gosh! Thanks, Milkman! Brought to you by Nick at Night, dedicated to better living through television. Everybody, I got great news. We are no longer the bottom-rated news station in Minneapolis. Well, how can that be? There's nothing below the bottom. Uh, we're next to the bottom. Uh, Four. No kidding. <laughs> oh, boy, I never thought something like this would make me happy, but this is terrific. If only we could keep it up. You know what this could mean? A congressional investigation of the rating system? Oh. Uh, boy, am I pooped. Hey, Ted, the new ratings came out. Oh? Ted, come back here. Oh, no, you just want to make me feel like the ratings are my fault. No, Ted, the ratings are good. Look. 
Go on. Oh, not bad. Not bad? What do you mean, not bad? That's the best we've ever done. Well, you guys may be satisfied, but not me. You know how I am in my quest for perfection. <laughs> I'll take off my makeup. Well, that's right. It's the first of the month, isn't it? I gotta go tell the crew. This is gonna make them so happy. Okay, I'll go with you. I want to see their faces. Tell them they get an extra ration of rum. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Grant. Georgette. Hmm. I was supposed to meet Ted. Mm -hmm. But I, don't bother him. I'm sure he'll be right out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to bother you either. I'll wait outside. No, no. Come on back. It's nice seeing you again. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, how's the manicure job going? Oh, I quit that weeks ago. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what are you doing? I'm a golden girl now. <laughs> I go from door to door selling golden girl cosmetics. Ding dong, it's your golden girl. <laughs> Everything for the more beautiful you. <laughs> Do you want to see my sample? Why not? What do you got? Bath oil beads. Makes you feel like you've been massaged by a thousand little hands. Oh I'm sorry they make me say that. <laughs> You're a real cutie, you know that? Thanks. What else you got? Wrinkle cream. Comes in three aromas. Fresh strawberry, fresh banana, and fresh unscented. <laughs> no. I don't think I want Edie to smell like a banana. I need the rating book. The crew doesn't believe me. Here. Hiya, George. Yes. Hi, Mary. I was just showing Mr. Grant my golden girl line. Oh, how's it going? Oh, like hotcakes. Good. <laughs> Hello, Ted. Told you, I don't like to smooch in public. I'm sorry, but can you go now? Oh, sure, only I'm a little tired tonight. So I'm going to go right home and log a little sack time. I'll call you tomorrow, maybe. He uh, really was tired. I mean, all you had to do was watch him on the show tonight. Yeah. Boy. Hey, Georgette, I, I know if you're not doing anything tonight, why don't you come have dinner with Rhoda and me? Well, it'd be fun, just you, me, and Rhoda, huh? Georgette? What? Oh, thank you. I like that a lot. Okay, good. I tell you, I still have a little work to do, but why don't you meet me at my place around 8 o'clock? All right. Okay. Say, Georgette, I'll uh, take one of those uh, wrinkle cream things. <laughs> yeah, Lou, you owe it to yourself. <laughs> After all, it isn't every day you're number four. <laughs> Unscented. You know, I don't understand how Georgette could have been in such a good mood after Ted stood her up like that, and he does it all the time. Why don't you say something to him about it? Well, I can't. It's, I, I'm not Miss Fix-It. It's none of my business. About all I could do was give him a long, dirty look. What'd he do? Well, you know Ted. He thought I was coming on with him. <laughs> you know what really kills me? I am the one who introduced Ted and Georgette to each other. Mia, I met a guy who'd be really great for Georgette. He's sensitive, he's kind, and loving. Wait, what am I doing? I almost gave away a guy who's sensitive, kind, and loving. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you are right. She must like Ted. I mean, if she didn't, she wouldn't go out with him anymore. Right. I didn't like him, so I didn't go out with him anymore. <laughs> you went out with yes, Ted? once, once when? only. Around the holidays. Why? I don't know. I get a little crazy around Christmas. <laughs> there was old Ted with his silver hair and his jolly ho, ho, ho. Sort of a Santa figure for me. Well, why, why didn't you tell me? I did. You asked me, uh, what'd you do last night? And I said, I went out with some jerk. I just didn't tell you his name. Well, I sure wish you hadn't told me now. Why? Because when I heard you went out with Ted, I painted the doorknob. <laughs> Golden girl. Oh. Come on in, Georgette. I can't. It's locked. Yeah. 
Well, it's locked. Uh, well, uh, just, uh, a minute. <laughs> Hello, Rhoda. Hi, nice Georgette. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Mary. Nice Hi. to see you. Hi. Excuse me, Georgette. i got to go clean off my hand. Does she do that every time she shakes hands? <laughs> no, no. She was painting. Mary, I just love your apartment. Well, you've been here before. I know, but I just love your apartment. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is for you, Rhoda. It is. And this is for you, Mary. Well, what are these for? Well, you two didn't let me pay for dinner last night, and I wanted to do something to say thank you. Oh, these are beautiful mm. placemats. Yeah. I made them. I hope you like them. You made them. these? I love them. Oh, look at this. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to get a little couch to go with this. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Really? <laughs> Who's that one for? Oh, this is Ted's laundry. <laughs> you uh, do Ted's laundry, huh? Yeah. He likes the way I fluff and fold. <laughs> I have to be going now. Uh, Georgette, ho hold it. I, um, I want to tell you about this wonderful guy that Rhoda has for you. Sure. Oh, no, that's silly, Georgette. I mean, I don't care if Ted knows I've introduced you to somebody else. Well, let him be mad. I'm not afraid of Ted Baxter. Bye-bye. Turn up the sound and see if you can figure out what's going on. <laughs> now for our closing humorous notes. In Stamford, Connecticut, Tom Campbell was excused from jury duty when he came up with a very good excuse. He was a defendant. <laughs> And that was our humorous note for today. <laughs> this is Ted Baxter. Good night and good news. I haven't seen Ted so angry since they canceled my mother the car. <laughs> What's he so mad about? Me. Lou, I want to call a meeting of the entire staff. <laughs> <laughs> Out here. <laughs> this meeting will now come to order. Ted. <laughs> Chair, I'd like to make an opening statement. I always like to think that our little newsroom was one big happy family. But in my innocence, little did I suspect we'd be harboring a backstabber in our very bosom. I'm going to reveal the name of that person. The backstabber is... Isn't this where the lights go off and Ted is found dead on the floor? <laughs> the backstabber is Mary Richards. Uh, Ted, look, couldn't we... Who has deliberately set out to poison the relationship between me and my woman. Ted. Admit it, Mary. Tonight, Georgette's going out with a guy that you fixed her up with. Yes, I admit it, but I really uh -huh. don't see... She admits it. Oh, okay, Ted, she admitted it. Is that it? No. I also want her to admit that she made a mistake and she won't do it again. Mary, tell him you made a mistake and you won't do it again. I'm not going to say anything like that. How's that, Ted? That good enough for you? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm going to the mat on this, Lou. This is big. It's not like the fresh towels from my dressing room. I'm not giving in this time. I'll tell you what, Ted. I'll talk to Mary. And I'll get back to you later. Say... How about those fresh towels? Okay, okay, okay. Mary first, then the towels. Mr. Grant, you don't have to say anything. I'll be okay. No, let's talk. No, really, I'm, I'm fine. Let's just forget about it. No, I, I can't forget about it. Oh, well, that's really very sweet of you, Mr. Grant, but honestly... Because I agree with Ted. <laughs> you agree with Ted? Why? Because I don't think you should go messing around in Ted's personal life. Well, I don't see it that way, Mr. Grant. Sit down. Mary... What you're doing is liable to affect Ted's work. I don't see how this has anything to do with work. 
In the same way as my rule about nobody at the station being allowed to date Ted. We don't have a rule like that. Oh, Ted, you don't have to make it a rule. It just works out that way. <laughs> Which is why that girl is very important to him. Yeah, but she's very important to me, too. Mary, you're just gonna have to see this my way. Well, I'm afraid I can't, Mr. Grant. So, uh, if you'll excuse me. No. I can't excuse you. This isn't settled yet. Well, then I'll, I'll just have to go anyway. You're gonna leave? Yes. Without my telling you it's okay? Yes. When? <laughs> now. Of course, it would make it a lot easier if you would just say good night, Mary. I can't say that because this meeting is not over. <laughs> well, good night, Mr. Grant. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not going to say good uh, night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> Could Ted Baxter ever love another as much as himself? This Sunday, Very, Very Nick at Night brings together the whole saga of an anchor in love. It's Very, Very Ted and Georgia. This Sunday at 9, 8 central on Nick at Night. You don't cut corners when maintaining the great American home of Henry Ford. The paint these professionals use? Sears Easy Living Interior and Weather Beater Exterior Paints. And right now, you can save on paint for your home, like these Easy Living Paints. All your choice, just $9.99 a gallon. And these weather beater paints, also just $9.99 a gallon. Easy living and weather beater paints for great American homes like yours. You can count on me. To celebrate Buick's 90th anniversary, we proudly introduce the 90th anniversary Le Sabre. Sabre has a proven reputation for quality and the highest pre-sale value in its class. Now you get all this Buick quality, comfort, and elegance at a special anniversary price. The 90th anniversary Buick Le Sabre. Quality its competition just can't hold a candle to. Get paid just like this. Swing them up, spray them wild. So much fun, so many styles. Cool. Hollywood hair, Barbie. Whether it's caused by a cord, a box, or even a violin, it's TV's most unforgettable affliction, and it's part of our television heritage. What is it, Dr. Amnesia? It sure is, and it's TV's favorite neurological disorder. Amnesia? Superman's had it. Who is Superman? Max did, too. Who are you people? What do you want? What am I doing here? And Lucy, Rob, Agarn, even Flipper. Amnesia. And he's lost his memory? Amnesia. It's part of our television heritage. Look for it on Nick at Night. Say, how are you and Lou doing? Well, I don't know. I have a feeling he's been ducking me all day, but I'll see him before I go home tonight and try to straighten things out. Uh, very, uh, <clears throat> about that, um, thing that, uh, I happen. I know, well, Mr. Uh, Grant. Me too. It's uh. <laughs> it's, it, it's. I feel uh, exactly the same way. Oh, <laughs> uh, good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, by now I guess you found out that your attempt to break up Georgette and me didn't work. 
That lightweight you found her just couldn't hack the competition? <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, hi, Georgette. Yeah, he is. Just a moment, please. It's for you. Hi, baby. <laughs> tonight? Oh, no, not tonight. Tonight I've got other fish to fry. Oh. Um, maybe tomorrow. Why don't you call me tomorrow? Numero uno, Mayor. Numero uno. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Georgette. Listen, as long as you're not doing anything tonight, I'd like you to meet this terrific guy I know. <laughs> right, we'll double. I'll call you later and let you know what time. <laughs> the double date with George Ed. I mean, did you fix her up with a nice guy? Yeah, and it was uh, pretty awful. Awful? Well, he's one of the nicest guys I know. Sweet, gentle. And? And by the time the evening was over, this nice, sweet, gentle guy was treating her crummy. What do you mean, ma'am? She brings out the worst in men. I mean, I think we're going about this the wrong way. Ted's not the problem. It's George Ed. Yeah, I see what you mean. She's a professional victim, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> Mary, I was like that once myself. Okay, a little different style, of course. A little louder, as we all know. But Mary, I never did a guy's laundry. Never did my laundry. Wait, it gets better. This guy that I fixed her up with last night called her up and said, how about dinner? She said, fine. And by the time we got over to her house to pick her up, she had made the dinner. Oh, she really is a pro. Yeah. What are we going to do about her, Rhoda? I mean, or even should we? I mean, I just don't know. Maybe we shouldn't, Mayor. I'm tempted to take advantage of her myself. <laughs> knock, knock. It's your golden girl. Your doorbell wasn't working. That's why I couldn't say ding <laughs> Oh, thanks. I just ran out. <laughs> Georgia, would you like some coffee? No, but I'll make some if you want it. No, 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 it's it's already made. You sure you would like some? Okay, if you already made it, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Georgia, could you pick that up for me? Sure. Hello? Guess she is. Just a minute, please. It's for me. <laughs> Yes, Ted. Okay, sure. Bye-bye, Ted. He just wanted me to add vitamin E and tiger's milk to his shopping list. Georgia, uh, I, I think we ought to have a small talk. And you better sit down, because we're going to give it to you with both barrels. Oh, good. Bye right here. Look, about you and Ted. I know what you think about Ted, Mary. Uh-uh, no, we're not talking about Ted now. We're mad at you, Georgette. Well, what you're doing? Then I won't do it anymore. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Georgette, what, what you're doing is not having enough respect for yourself. Georgette, what do you think of yourself? Yeah, come on, tell us. Well, I think I'm about five foot six, and I have sort of curlish blonde hair. No, no, Georgia, we don't mean what you look like. We're talking about what you are. Listen, say something positive about yourself. Well, I have good handwriting. <laughs> And I like animals. <laughs> and I think I understand why you're trying to help me. You do? Great. Okay, now come on, tell us something really positive about you. I'm good with my hands. <laughs> and I'm a pretty fair country cook. And I'd like to think I'm a nice person. Just Nice? Very nice. <laughs> Damn nice. <laughs> now you make sure that Ted finds that out. Okay. I'll try and tell him sometime when we're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs>
Lord knows when that'll be. <laughs> Want to have a pillow fight? <laughs> Ken, I don't feel like having a pillow fight tonight. Oh? <laughs> don't blow on my face, Dan. What's wrong? I thought you liked that. Not now. I want to talk. Can we have a pillow fight and then talk? <laughs> feel like talking. All right, what do we talk about? Sports, news, weather? <laughs> Say, did you hear about that tidal wave in Peru? <laughs> Damage to livestock, crops, and property was estimated in the billions of dollars. Not that kind of talk. Ted, I think there's something we have to settle about our relationship. My funny Valentine. <laughs> Sweet comic Valentine. <laughs> You make me smile with my heart. I don't think we should see each other anymore. <laughs> what? Why not? Say, has Mary been talking to you again? I think it's for the best all around. You're kidding. I'm not kidding, Ted. Oh, you're just in a lousy mood. You come to your senses. I mean it. My funny Valentine. <laughs> Sweet comic Valentine. Please don't make it any harder than it is, Ted. But that's our song, isn't it? <laughs> I think you should go home now, Ted. Okay, if that's the way you want it, that's the way you're going to get it. I have to stay around here, you know. Plenty of fish to fry in the ocean. <laughs> and don't bother to change your mind, I'm going. So long, baby. <laughs> Thanks for the memory. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> I said I wanted to go, but I don't really want to go. I lied. You did? Don't. Don't make me go, Georgia. I can change. Just, just tell me what it is you want me to do, and I'll do it. You mean it? <laughs> sure, I mean it. Just, just tell me what it is, and I'll do it. Unless you don't want me to do it, then I won't do it. <laughs> well, I don't want to do your laundry anymore. <laughs> I'll match your socks, but I don't want to do your laundry. <laughs> okay, baby. What else? I don't want you to call me baby anymore. I'm not a baby. All right. What do you want me to call you? Let's see this. Uh, cookie. Bunny. Lambkins. Angel. Puss. Ducky. And if you don't like any of those, I'll have Murray come up with something. <laughs> Georgette. I want Georgette. But that's so long. It's what I want. It's my name. Okay, Georgette. Ted, there's one more thing. What is it? You never told me you loved me. Well, that's not an easy thing for me to say. Why? Well, because when I said it before to people, no one ever said it back. I'll say it back. You will? I promise. Okay. <clears throat> I love, 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 love you. And I love you, Ted. You do. <laughs> you want me to say it again? <laughs> I love you, Georgette. <laughs> want me to say it without moving my lips? I love you. <laughs> want me to say it like Lowell Thomas? This is Lowell Thomas saying, I love you. <laughs> yes, so wonderful. I only want to make you happy. And if you say me, go away, I will. But I think better still, I'd better stay around and love you. Do you think I have a case? Let me cast you to your face.
got a healthy new lift with the new Pantene Pro-V styling line. Don't worry about styling damage. This is healthy. Pantene's got pro-vitamins. Pro-V means pro-vitamins. They go into your hair. Want lift? Pro-V's got it. All the lift you need, right where you need it. Get healthy style. Get healthy, shiny Pantene hair. New Pantene Pro-V styling for hair so healthy it shines. You'll see. WPOC's Lori DeYoung. Country music is hotter than ever in Baltimore. So hot that the Country Music Association shows WPOC as the station of the year. And that's exciting. There's so much variety in country music. It doesn't all sound the same. And you know why? Some of the best songwriters in America today are writing country music. There's still great music on the radio. You just have to know where to find it. Try the station of the year. FM 93.1 WPOC. There's a clean, natural place. A special place deep in the woods of Maine. The source of Poland Spring natural spring water. Crisp and refreshing, it's one of nature's treasures. And it remains unspoiled because thousands of guards protect it. You got TV class, you got TV style Nothing fits your screen is right It's Nick Cat Night Morning, Chad Morning, Mayor How was your weekend? I want to tell you about my weekend I want to tell you about my weekend Why don't you tell me about your weekend? Being with Georgette was like being with another woman It's incredible I mean, we were equal We cooked dinner in the kitchen side by side and afterwards, she selected the movie we went to see. I mean, for the first time, everything wasn't left up to me. And I understand you were responsible. Well, she's a friend, and I just wanted to be helpful. I just want you to know that as long as I live, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> Hit the ball, Lucy. <laughs> See Sally. Sally is single. Single, single, single. But Sally can sing. Sing it, Sally. See Dick, Jane, Lucy, Sally, and all the rest on Nick at Night. Have more fun with classic TV. The end. At last, it's evening, and a hot home-cooked meal can make up for so much. Bird's Eye Easy Recipe. Food from the heart, not the microwave. Just brown fresh chicken, then add the easy recipe blend of crisp bird's eye vegetables. Carrots, snow peas, broccoli, peppers, plus pasta, and a savory sauce. A great meal for two in minutes. So you do what you can, we'll do what you can't. Bird's eye easy recipe. Let's make dinner together. Do you want to train for a well-paying career? Would you like a career in computer servicing? Call RETS. In industrial electronics, automation, and robotics, call RETS. In broadcast engineering, call RETS. In satellite, radar, or microwave communications, call RETS. Would you like a career in air conditioning, refrigeration, heating, or solar energy? Call RETS. Would you like a career in computer-assisted drafting and design? Call RETS. In 30 years in Baltimore, we've trained thousands. Can we train you? Hi, I'm Cynthia Kerlick, and we're here to do roving aerobics. <laughs> Right foot in front of the left, bending. To get stamina, you need to exercise, and you also need to drink that white stuff called... Milk! Milk. Milk. It does a body good. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Is he really a firefighter, this gentleman here? <laughs> oh, you watch right. We eat with Nick at night. Keep it clean on the screen, Nick at night. <laughs> Use it only as directed, cause it's copyright protected. Keep your TV set connected, Nick at night.
Could Ted Baxter ever love another as much as himself? This Sunday, Very, Very Nick at Night brings together the whole saga of an anchor in love. It's Very, Very Ted and Georgia. This Sunday at 9, 8 central on Nick at Night. Who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell, why don't you take it You're gonna make it after Geometry is timeless. Its power is mystical. And it's great at parties. It's the triple. And it's part of our television heritage. Mel, can I get you something? Cup of coffee? Donut? Two pay? A triple is when two words or ideas set up a pattern. A third interrupts it with a punchline, and the result is a joke. He's a hawk. You're a dove. Ted's a cuckoo. Easy to learn, fun to use, and... Sure! <laughs> the triple. It's part of our television heritage. Look for it on Nick at Night. Hello, this is something new. Boboli, Italian bread shell, and I am Vittorio. And about pizza? Oh, yes, Mama, my mother. We think Boboli bread shell is ten times better than pizzeria crust. So you make ten times better pizza than pizzeria. Put on top tomato sauce, mozzarella, onions. I'm sure. Put what you like. It's ready. Eight minutes in the oven. You never taste such a good pizza. It's in the supermarket. On a rack? On a rack, like this. See you next time. This is it. Eyeshadow so different, so alive. Clarion introduces new captive color eyeshadow. Different because this special cream powder base goes on first. So color locks on for hours. Unstoppable color. Only from the Clarion computer. Captive color eyeshadow. Because we don't want you to look kind of nice. We want you gorgeous. Clarion. thing better for colors than cheer is new cheer with advanced color guard now it goes color stays longer <laughs> nine out of ten barnyard animals agree watch nick at night for good tv have another mary when are we going to eat dinner pretty soon i'm waiting for another guest well, who else do you know? I invited Mel Price. Mary, I'm surprised at you being so insecure. You have to butter up the station manager by having him to dinner. Ted. I'll get it. <laughs> Mel, we were worried sick about you. <laughs> hi, Mary, hi, Lou. Hi. Georgia, hi. hi. I'm sorry, I'm late. There was a little pro pro problem at the station. <laughs> Mort Lockwood? Just walked out, suddenly find myself with an hour of variety programming to fill. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ted, aren't you taking it awfully hard? Well, the poor man. He wakes up this morning like any other day and he has to fill a whole hour of programming. <laughs> I don't know where you're going to get anybody else in a hurry. <laughs> Ted, are you suggesting that you can uh, han ha handle this show? Well... It hadn't occurred to me, but it's a darn good notion. <laughs> you don't understand, uh, Ted. This is not just a news show. It needs an entertainer. <laughs> hey, guys, he thinks I'm not an entertainer. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's this? Mary, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a large blindfold? Gee, I'm sorry, Ted. All my blindfolds are in the wash. <laughs> what a napkin do? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is a little something George Hitt and I worked up as an act for a church benefit. Come on, everybody, inside! <laughs> okay, take it, Georgette. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted is going to demonstrate mental powers you never knew he had. <laughs> What's he gonna do, come in out of the rain? <laughs> As I pass among you, I'm going to ask each one for an object, which the amazing Theodore, completely blindfolded, will correctly identify just by reading my mind. Ready, Teddy? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding an object, Ted, and thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I'm getting very strong waves. Ted, get the lead out and let's come to the point. <laughs> Aha! I think I have it. You're holding a pencil. The amazing Theodore! <laughs> what am I holding now, Ted? Don't blow it. <laughs> You're holding... A trumpet. <laughs> Who would be carrying a trumpet? A trombone. Think carefully, Ted. Everybody knows. Everybody knows what? That um, this is nothing to sneeze at. Ah, I'm getting very strong waves. No more hanky panky, Ted. I'm getting very, very strong waves. Ted, what I'm holding is made of cloth and you squeeze it with your fingers and you blow into it. It's a bagpipe. Ted, you big palooka, we don't have a finger for a bagpipe. <laughs> but I think you did very well, don't you? Oh. <laughs> Weren't they unbelievable, Mary? Unbelievable. The way they work with each other, the ten ten tenderness, the, the innocent charm. <laughs> when was the last time you heard anybody called a palooka? <laughs> I didn't mean it in a bad way. I think he's a nice palooka. Oh, I know, I know. And it, and it shows. In fact, I think the two of you are the uh, cutest uh, uh, husband and wife team I've seen in years. How would you like to turn pro? Great idea. And you won't even have to give up the news show. Oh. <laughs> I just think that a ha ha husband and wife team could add a whole 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 new element to that show. You said a mouthful there. Because <laughs> it took you a little longer than most people, but it was worth waiting for. <laughs> Gee, thanks for coming. Oh, are you kidding? We wouldn't miss it. Your opening show. Well, it's just an audition, Mary. If we blow it, it's also our closing show. No. Ah, oh, you won't blow it. Where's Ted? Talking to the choreographer. The choreographer? I didn't know the show was going to have dancing. Well, it wasn't. It was Ted's idea. He wants a big production number on every show. How can you have a production number? There's just you, Ted, and one guest. I know. I hope the bishop can dance. <laughs> hey, Lou, Mary. Hi, hey, I had no idea show business was so exciting. Uh -huh. The station's really giving us the big star treatment. You know, we just let the dressing room. There's a 12-year-old bottle of scotch and a bouquet of roses. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe next week there'll be something for you, Georgette. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know the best thing of all? They gave me a flunky. A flunky? Well, yeah, you know, starting to need someone to do errands for them. Uh, Elliot, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> this is my flunky. <laughs> Give him some pictures. <laughs> I have one, Elliot. <laughs> Come on, Ted, let's get started. Uh, okay, if you want those autographed, Elliot can do that, too. Make them personal. They're close friends. <laughs> Wish him luck. Uh, yeah. Oh, good yeah. luck. A yeah. lot of luck. Thanks. Gee, this is exciting. <laughs> It's like being at... Los Alamos. Los Alamos? <laughs> Birthplace of the biggest bomb in history. Oh, well, here we go. Any predictions? Yeah, it should shorten the war by at least two years. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to Tonight in Town. And here are tonight's guest hosts, Ted and Georgette Baxter. Hello, hello. Hooray, hooray. I'm Ted. And I'm Georgette. Don't touch that dial. Don't go away. You ain't seen... Nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking A-bomb, Mary. We're talking H-bomb. That was cute. Huh? That was pretty cute. 
I, well, I wouldn't want to see it often, but it was cute. Well, here we are, Teddy Bear, on our very own show. Live from Minneapolis. And I'd like to say hello to all my friends out there. And if it's okay, I'd like to say hello to our children. Hi, David. Hi, Mary Lou. And I'd like to say a word to our babysitter. I'm not paying you a buck an hour to watch television. <laughs> Don't pay attention to this big dog. They really are cute, little Luke. Uh, adorable. <laughs> well, Mary, I think I'll go now. I'll see you in the office tomorrow. No, Mr. Grant, you've got to watch the rest of the show. Oh, that's okay. I've gotten the flavor of it. A real friend would stay for the whole show. And now it's time for our first commercial. But don't go away, everybody. As soon as we get back, the amazing Theodore, that's Teddy, is going to show us his incredible mind-reading ability. <laughs> okay, let's go. This part of the program is brought to you by Bowser Banquet, the doggy food that every dog loves. Yes, sir. You just watch Happy here gobble up her Bowser banquet. <laughs> okay, come and get it. <laughs> come on, Happy. Here you are. Have a girl. It's all for you. It's all yours. Go ahead, gobble it up. <laughs> You want, you want to play choo-choo. Uh, okay. Here comes the choo-choo. Please. -choo. <laughs> oh, I guess you forgot about playing choo-choo. <laughs> Did you want to grow up to be a great dame? <laughs> Come on, it's really good for you. I'll show you how good it is. I'll taste it for you. <laughs> Hey, Lou, look, I gotta ask you something. Uh, you were a crime reporter. Yeah. I mean, you, you've seen appalling things. Yeah. Nothing ghastly shocks you. Mm. So, I'll, would you explain why... The success of the Ted and Georgette show. <laughs> exactly. Now, they've been on almost two weeks, Lou, and, mm -hmm. uh, well, their ratings are higher than ever. Now, why do people watch that stuff, <laughs> Lou? It's so, it's so ordinary. Mm -hmm. You got the dumb talent hunt, you got mm -hmm. the beautiful baby contest. Oh, <laughs> you know who the big guests were yesterday? Mm. A couple celebrating the third wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lou, where do they find those guests? I mean, they're so dull. The night watchman and the dry cleaners. <laughs> you know, it's like they make dull a requirement to get on the show. Go figure it out, Murray. Who with any intelligence would want to be on a show like that? <laughs> hey, guys, guess what? what? I'm going to be a guest on the Ted and Georgette show next week. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Well, we were, uh, we were just, uh, we were just asking, uh, where do Ted and Georgette get their talent? And you just strolled right on in. Oh, yeah. right at that instant. Yeah, that, that very instant. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, what are you going to do on the show, Mary? I think they probably want to ask me some questions about producing a news show. Of course, they want a light touch, too. So I thought of an opening joke. You're going to tell an opening joke? Yeah, yeah, and, and I want to try it out on you because I don't want to use it unless it's very funny. Oh, okay. Okay, so I thought I would say, um, I'm very glad to be here tonight. Of course, the way my cabbie drove, I'd be glad to be anywhere. <laughs> is it very funny? I guess it is. I think it's funny. I knew it was! <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Can I have Elliot get anybody a cup of coffee? No, thank you. Cream and sugar. I thought you uh, drank it black. Well, I do, but I'm training him to handle a little more responsibility. <laughs> well, enough chit-chat. I'm a busy man. Mary, the baseball player we had scheduled for tonight fell out. We want you to fill in for him. Uh, me? me? T tonight? What are you going to be on next week anyway? What's the difference? But, Ted, it's so, so sudden. I mean, I don't have time to prepare for it. <laughs> What's to prepare? It's an interview. We ask you how the news is done, and you tell us. Yeah, it's about time Ted found out anyhow. 
If you're a pro, you can be ready at a moment's notice. Right? Right. <laughs> when I'm right, I'm right. Well, Mary, what do you say? Time is money. Can you get yourself ready in a couple of hours? No. Yes. I guess. I don't. All right. Fine, fine. It's settled. Ooh, I've got to go. I've got to check those sets. Say goodbye for me. I don't have time. <laughs> goodbye. Hello, Mom. Listen, I'm not going to be on the show next week. I'm going to be on tonight. Okay, I'll talk to you afterwards. Bye-bye. Georges, hi. Oh, I am so excited. I'm going to be on the show tonight. I mean, I'm not even sure I'll know what to say, but I am really excited. <sighs> Me too, Mary. I'm thrilled to death. Good. <laughs> Nick at Night, as a public service, presents How to Be Swell. An instructional series helping you, the viewer, experience better living through television. Tonight's segment, The Privilege of Glands. How much do you know about glands? Did you know they're like little factories, producing fluids for vitality, happiness, and good ventilation? Did you know glands are a privilege? A privilege we sometimes take for granted. What would life be like in a country where glands were regulated, even forbidden? In communist societies, people must stand in line for hours just to sweat. This unfortunate boy will wait another 10 years for permission to reach puberty. Yes, thank goodness we live in a country where glands are a constitutional guarantee. Let's respect the privilege of glands, because they're so well. Nick at Night, dedicated to better living through television. There's no guarantee that what goes up must come down that it takes two to tango, or that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But there's one guarantee you can always count on, the new McDonald's guarantee. Our promise of hot food, fast, friendly service, and drive through orders double check to be right. If not, we'll make it right, or your next meal is on us. Some things in life are guaranteed. Barbie doll has pink hair and a crown that sprays water. Sure. Unsure. Sure. Unsure. Sure Solid has the most effective wetness fighting ingredient you can buy. So when dryness counts, be sure to be dry. To break that endless cycle of mundane work and woe, more doctors recommend Nick at Night than any remedy I know. Georgette, what is it? I don't want to do the show anymore. Why not? I don't enjoy it. I spend all day at the studio. I never see my children. I never get to cook a meal. I never get to do anything in my own house. And I miss doing those things, Mary. Maybe it's dumb. No, Georgia, that's not dumb. I never wanted to be a performer. I just did it because Ted wanted me to. And now the show's a hit and I can't get out of it and I want my old life back. Oh, Mary, can you understand that? Of course I can. Am I being unreasonable? Of course you're not. Does it make any sense at all? Sure it does. Damn right. <laughs> George, Ed, why don't you just go to Ted and tell him you don't want to do the show anymore? Because it means so much to him. He would break his heart if he had to give it up. But, Georgette, you've got to think of yourself, too. You can't go through life unhappy. I mean, there's no point in being a martyr. I guess you're right, Mary. I have to talk to Ted. But I want to find the right moment. 
I think I'll wait till tonight when we're alone together in bed, and then I'll tell him I don't want to anymore. And when he finds out that I mean the show, he'll be so relieved he'll agree to anything. <laughs> Thank you for your nice letter. It's always nice to hear from a fan. I can't honor your request for tickets, but I am enclosing an autographed picture. And how shall I sign that? Your loving son, Ted. <laughs> Five minutes, Ted. Oh, hi, honey. How's Mary? Oh, well, she's a little nervous, but she'll be fine. Ah, sure she will. Am I right? You're right. <laughs> but I'm right, I'm right. <laughs> we have such a bright future, Georgia. Right, dear. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? Nothing. <laughs> yes, there is. But a guy's married as long as I have, he gets to spot those little clues. <laughs> Tell me you'd find out what's the matter. <laughs> about it when we're alone. We are alone. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, that's, that's enough. Thanks a lot. I mean, let's face it, how can you improve on God's handiwork? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey, what's bothering you? We're still not alone, Ted. Sorry, Elliot. Would you, would you excuse me? Certainly, Mr. Baxter. Anything you say? Ted, I want to talk to you about the show. I don't want to do it now, but I think we should sit down and have a serious talk afterward. Why can't we talk about it now? It's too close to airtime. So? It might upset you. Hey, you're talking to Ted Baxter, the professional's professional. I don't get upset by things. Well, you might. Nothing you could say to me could affect my performance out there. That's not true. Remember the time Murray told you just before the news that Lassie was three different dogs? And you had to have ice pressed against the back of your neck before you could go on? Hey, Georgia, if there's something you want to talk about, let's talk. All right. Ted, I don't want to do the show anymore. I tried. I really tried. But I'm really not happy. <laughs> hey. oh, Georgette, that's out of the question. We're a big hit. We've got to do the show, and that's all there's to it. All right, Ted, if that's what you really want. Hey. You know, Teddy Bear doesn't like to see his... George Ed looking sad. Come on now. Let me see your nice big happy face. There, that's better. <laughs> Jerry, do you want to sit in the middle? Sit in the middle. Okay. And don't worry, this will be fun. How can you do this to me, George Ed? Right in the middle of a successful show. Okay, everybody, here we go in five. Four, three, two, one. Live from Minneapolis, here are Ted and Georgette Baxter. Hello, hello. Hooray, hooray. I'm Ted. And I'm Georgette. Don't touch that dial. Don't go away. You ain't seen. Nothing yet. <laughs> Why don't you tell everybody about tonight's guest, honey? Uh, Mary Richards, the... Producer of the six o'clock news. We'll be back with our guest right after these messages. Ted, I can't do it. I tried. I gave it all I had, but I just can't do it. I'm sorry for letting you back. Hey, wait a minute. Georgette. 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 Ted. Five seconds. Ted. Four. Georgette. Three. Two. One. You know, I'm uh, sure that any people who are watching must be wondering why I'm here alone. And, uh, and, and I, I know that people usually enjoy behind the scenes stuff. And the, the reason that I'm here alone is because uh, Ted and Georgette aren't here. But I, th I think that they'll be back shortly. 
if there's a God in heaven. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, produce the six o'clock news, and, I, and I'm sure that they, uh, they plan to ask me uh, a lot of questions about that. Uh, uh, like, um, how long have I been producing the news? Seven years. <laughs> do, do I enjoy it? Sure do. <laughs> well, what, what exactly uh, does a producer do? <laughs> oh, boy, you name it. <laughs> uh, well, okay, okay. okay. One, one of the uh, things that I do is uh, setting the whole lineup for the show, seeing, you know, how many commercials we have and when, um, when they come in, in the show. Like, uh, when, when, when's the next commercial in this show? <laughs> Seventeen minutes? <laughs> It won't work, kid. Please, you can do this alone. Oh, I can't. I checked. You want the both of us on the show. Yeah. What would it be like without you? Hello, hello. I'm Ted. Don't touch that dial. You ain't seen. <laughs> I need you, honey. I'm sorry, Ted, but I can't help it. Why does it just seem more important to me to raise the children than to do the show? I mean, what do you think? I wouldn't want to change diapers and scrub the floor? I mean, somebody's got to put on makeup and sit in the spotlight. Ted, one of us has got to make a big sacrifice. <laughs> oh, gee. Why does it always have to be you? <laughs> that question that everybody wants an answer to. What do I do after I check the promo log? <laughs> well, I'd like to answer that question, but I'm afraid I don't have any time. Oh, I do have time. <laughs> Ted, I can't do it. This is very important to you, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. All right, I'll give it up. I'll give oh. it up. <laughs> I'll give up the fame. I'll give up the money. But can I ask one thing of you in return? Sure. Can I keep Elliot? <laughs> Sometimes there's some film to, to look at, and, and then I brown bag it in the screening room. Uh, am I getting too technical? Oh, it's time for a commercial already. Okay, I'm sure George, uh, Jed and Ted will be back soon, so don't go away. Back in 30 seconds. I can't. I just can't. Keep can't. doing can't. what you're doing. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. What's wrong, Miss Major Richards? You have no idea how lonely it is up there. Yeah? Try being a messenger boy for Howard Hughes. You were a messenger boy for Howard Hughes? Yeah, for three years. Nobody ever let me talk. All I did all day was listen, listen, listen. Elliot, come sit down. We're going to give you a chance to talk. <laughs> Isn't it always the way just when you give up hope? Okay, guys, come on, let's move it. Let's get those cameras rolling. We've got to show the TV. Hi. Hello again. <laughs> My next guest is Elliot. <laughs> Elliot, what were you just telling me your job was for three years? Aaron boy for Howard Hughes. <laughs> ah. Then did you actually meet Mr. Hughes and get to speak with him? Oh, yeah. Lots of times. Well, then I imagine you have many stories to tell us about Mr. Hughes's last years. Well, about a million or two, that's all. <laughs> okay. Why don't you just tell us some of the things you used to do for him? Well, uh, one of the things I did was... I, I used to make him snacks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, one of his favorites was this very special peach melba I used to make for him. Uh -huh. yeah, it was a scoop of vanilla ice cream on top of a plain pound cake uh -huh. with fresh peaches <laughs> with a little bit of chocolate syrup. <laughs> oh, he used to really love that. <laughs> I don't blame him. I'd love some myself. <laughs> All right, Miss Richards, I'll get you one. <laughs>
next time someone tells you that I Love Lucy is the same as The Lucy Show, tell them there are big differences. For example, I Love Lucy is in black and white. The Lucy Show is mostly in color. I Love Lucy was filmed in the 1950s. The Lucy Show was filmed in the 1960s. I Love Lucy features stars from old Hollywood. The Lucy Show features old Hollywood stars. Don't just take our word. Compare for yourself. Watch I Love Lucy and The Lucy Show back to back on Sunday Night Lucy. Sundays on Nick at Night. And yet there's still only one place dedicated to giving it your way. And it's the number one maker of chicken sandwiches. We're the one, not one, but two. We're the one made just for you. Bring safe the chicken on a bun. We're the one. We're the one to give you more. You're the one we're cooking for. Best than a chicken on a bun. We're the one. Your way right away. At Burger King now. Honey, my hair is the best. What's wrong? It goes every which way. I mean, how come your hair always goes the right way? It's all hairspray. No, these. You mean with all the expensive ones out there, suave is on you? That's it. Oh, now those. On night for Excedrin PM. <sighs> this day won't go away. My allowance. Hey. Your vacation? Cancel. The check? Wow. Ah. I can't sleep when my head aches. You want Excedrin PM, strong aspirin-free headache medicine you can feel good about, plus a gentle ingredient to help you sleep. Mother is staying indefinitely. Make a bad day go away with Excedrin PM, and rest assured it's aspirin-free. Some people. It's not mine. Crisp, clean dentine. We'll take care of your breath. The rest is up to you. Hi. Hi. There's only one place for better TV today. It's Prepo's Modern, Wild and Free. Watch Nick at Night for good TV. Yeah.